to get it on these youngins talking like they knowin' something Recognize that I've been through it, time to run it, let's get to it right, you always wrong, fourth quarter going strong You just be talking, you ain't on, like the verses in my songs, I'm going in Ladies and gentlemen, once again, once again, it is the going in podcast. <laughs> and, and listen, with yours truly, Lord Nelson, and that guy, Jay Parker, you know it. Thank you, man. It's about time. And yeah, we have bad, a very, 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 I don't know how many varies I could put on there. Super the special, special guest. I call him the magical one, the magical Mike Martin. I call him MMA. You know, excuse me, MMM, 3M, doing this thing. And it's all love, man. And we thank you for being here, bro. Yeah, thank, thank you. you so much. Appreciate you. Appreciate you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Thank I you, appreciate man. you, fellas. We're going to have a good conversation. You're, so far, you're the biggest artist that we've had. I've, I've talked to some other people, but it's I, a, I have it's, put on some weight. So that's. Yeah, I mean, yeah. stop it. It's, I'm it's working a on pleasure. That. Really? It's a pleasure to talk to you, man. Sure. So listen, how we want to start it off. And of course, I told you I've got plenty of questions. Okay. But let's start it off first. Let's talk about your background. I can go into it, but I'd rather you speak about it and let the, the, the people know about your background and what you do. Okay. Um, let's see. My background is um, raised in a very religious uh, Portuguese family in New England mm -hmm. uh, to a, a musical mom and a... Uh, love you, mom. Love you, mom. <laughs> love, mom. And uh, a military dad. I think that was my computer that was dinging, so I apologize. I forgot to Sorry. mute all that stuff. Um, so I uh, started on music very early. I'm the second of five kids. That's where the two of five thing Two of five. I was going to get into it, but you already did. Um, so, yeah, I started violin when I was like three and a half. My mom's a classical singer. She was the music minister at every church that we went to, um, you know, probably the, the biggest musical influence in my life. You know, hard to not have a, you know, substantial influence from your parents, right? Um, so did that for a while, sang in choirs because, you know, mom couldn't afford a babysitter. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> nothing else to do when you sit in the choir loft except, you know, figure it out. So I would figure it out. <laughs> and after a while, I get in the kids' choir and stuff like that and, you know, did all the, the usual church functions, altar boy, you know, because we had church all weekend anyway. I needed different things to do. <laughs> Cause I was starting to get in trouble. <laughs> um, it, it took piano lessons after a while. Um, but wasn't really, wasn't really into it, you know, like it was, it was curious, but I wasn't really into it. So, um, probably sometime around the time that my parents split, I mm -hmm. started getting real interested in guitar, right. you know, partly because, um, I think at that time I was much more aware of what was happening on the radio. Mm -hmm. um, and MTV was now a thing yes, at that sir. particular point. I was born in 74. So Are you like, just a baby. Yeah, man. No, so no, like no. MTV comes on and I'm like, what is this? Right. 100%. It's not cartoons, but it's just as ludicrous. <laughs> so I, I got real excited by seeing, you know, Eddie Van Halen. It's his birthday today, but seeing Eddie Van Halen on Happy uh, birthday. Yes. Um, seeing him on, on MTV and all that business and you know, it took a while before I actually got to lay my hands on one because we didn't have a guitar player in the family necessarily. Mm -hmm. So um, my dad got me my first one as a Christmas present. Right. All those many moons ago. Um, and pretty much I've been in one chair or another trying to figure it out ever since. Mm -hmm. That's kind of my love. background. Yeah, hey, yeah. man, listen. So you know, just you and I, I mean, so we've got a history. And it's all love. And, we, and we'll get into that. We'll get into that, of course. When you looking at Jay Parker, you see how big this guy is now? Do you remember how small they were, man? They were man, kids, man. man I told you, yeah. if you keep feeding them, that's what's going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> now that, look, now he's taller than me. Exactly. He's taller than me. It's crazy. And that's a fact because you you a big dude, man. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> <laughs> so let me ask you this. Yes. What genre is your favorite genre? You played in a lot of them. I know, listen, you've done the, the rap metal, you've done the Fozzy, you've done, uh, and, and, and mind you, man. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, no, no, we go, we go, we go. Okay. <laughs> I can't tap out that early. That was early. <laughs> I can't tap out that early, man. I 
Yeah, okay, okay. So you tap out on that one. That's no, 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 no. I'm being funny. I'm being okay. Funny. <laughs> yeah, wow. Talk to me. Um, you know, I, I think it, it depends, man. Like, I really love classical music, you know, mm-hmm. and I think that kind of comes from that's what we were doing in right. church. You know, that was the bulk of, of you know, so much it was, it was such a big part of worship it was such a big part of just family life you don't mm-hmm. know what you don't know right right like Indeed. if you grow if you grow up in a family where everybody's real into sports you're going to games you're trying out for teams you're, do, you're doing all the things man yeah. all the things right we weren't a sports family you gotcha. know we still did little league and my older brother did football and like mm-hmm. it's not like we weren't around sports like you can't avoid sports it's out right. man mm-hmm. it's real Indeed. but but musical stuff like i didn't know that every other kid didn't have all this music going on in their house mm-hmm. all the time, you know, because my mom was either preparing, you know, whatever she needed to do for, you know, the next week's service. And of course, everything's right. seriously tied to the liturgical calendar with the high Catholic church and the diocese and all the stuff. So like highest level order of like, there was always stuff going on. Mm-hmm. Um, you just, it, what's in your family is your culture. Like that's right. just what you know. So mm-hmm. like by the time I got to school and got to around other kids, mm-hmm. you know, I, I could already couldn't relate to them. Like I, I was a nerdy <laughs> kid anyway, yeah. but like, like I would go over to their houses and be like, what do y'all do? And they would just be sitting around watching a game or something like that. I'm like, well, this is cool. <laughs> but, but, but what do y'all do? <laughs> you know, like I got to go practice or I got to. Right, indeed. Practice so, your craft. Like, yeah. So it's it's an interesting thing, like or like we would listen to records. Be like, well, what records do you like to listen to? Like, mm-hmm. I don't know, Bach, you know, <laughs> or you, you have any Beethoven? Like, so bad. Because <laughs> I was I was dependent on going to my friends' houses, right? Because they had records, and their older brothers had. Not that we didn't have records, yeah. But you know, this is church folk growing up. Like, I couldn't just Different. go into any record store and get like the newest Iron Maiden. Right, right, right. Or, or, or even a Kiss record, like everything on it just looked demonic and terrible. So, right. So, you of course, I wanted, I want to listen to that stuff right. because the first thing off right out the gate, it irritates my parents. I'm already a fan. <laughs> I don't care. It could sound like straight hot garbage. Yeah. It irritates my parents. I'm into it. I'm, I'm, I'm into <laughs> it. All right, love, love. Well, well let me ask you this. So, like, let's that's, that's, that's a good place to start. But, like, what's my favorite genre? Mm-hmm. It, it varies. If I play a lot of classical music, I start jonesing for other things. Okay. Like when we were out on the road, you know, we're doing very aggressive stuff with Stuck Mojo. Mm-hmm. I would find myself coming home and like playing like bossa novas and Latin music on my Spanish guitar and stuff right. like that. Because like right. there, there wasn't a part of my creativity creativity that was really satisfying when mm-hmm. I was out doing the Mojo thing. Because right. like there's no half measures mm-hmm. like in anything. But in particular, in Stuck Mojo, we had there was no well. We're gonna we're gonna be kind of mad today, or we're, right. gonna, we're gonna be kind of aggressive. I mean, we're all clowns. We're all, you know, lovely people. Like right. That music was yeah. Yeah, none of us was spoiling for a fight, but you wouldn't know it by the downbeat. That's we right. Come out with, <laughs> to slay everybody, and like hey. I, think it, I think it worked no. because we we're real with that. Yeah, we felt that way though. You know, I'm, oh, yeah. I'm gonna say that. You know, nothing could touch the the original Stuck Mojo lineup, nothing ever. But I'm going to tell you, what we had was super special. Yeah. It 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 really worked. And so many people have let us know that. I know they've let you know also. And and I just thank everybody out there. I know I put out there on my Facebook, my Instagram page, I put the albums that I've done, you know, and the Stuck Mojo stuff and the No Power, No Crown and the Lies and the, you know, um, Plastic Catastrophe right now, which we got a new album coming out soon, which is amazing. Just staying busy. Nice. But I want to get back to the 205 album specifically. So 205, the song 205 is a super special song to me. I've told you that a million times. I love that song so much. Whatever it does to me, it's it really can't be explained how it makes me feel. It's, it's, it's like it it picks me up and drops me back off in the 70s somewhere. And when I hear that song, man, I, I really don't want anybody talking. I don't really want to be around anybody. I just want to enjoy every single second of it because I love it like that. The album is great. It's it's, it's beautiful. It's a masterpiece. But that song specifically, I could probably listen to it 100,000 straight times without man. It just does something to me. So tell us about the 205 album. Thank you. 
Thank you so much. Oh, you're like, welcome. Man. The Lord only tells the truth. <laughs> I know that's right. Um, it, it's interesting because, you know, for anybody watching this, that's an instrumental guitar record. So, like, I'm real inspired by, you know, you know, Jimi Hendrix, who didn't just do instrumental music, but like there's a lineage of this art rock guitar thing that's been around now for a while. Mm -hmm. And uh, Jeff Beck was a big proponent of it. I think what Jimi Hendrix was doing is certainly a, a big piece of it. Um, I think Eric Clapton was doing it, you know, before, you know, the, the famous Clapton we know now when he was right. back doing Cream and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. This whole psychedelic movement, like, where there was a lot more exploration in soloing and stuff like that for the vibe, you know, you'd mm -hmm. go to a, you'd go to a show and you'd want to see the jam and cause you don't right. know what's going to happen. Um, so I think that there's a piece of that. And then as that continued to grow as an art form, you know, certainly Frank Zappa wrote tons of instrumental music and right. was an incredible guitar virtuoso himself. And he spawned the careers of many of my favorite guitar players also, including Steve Vai, you know, really that so too, guitar yeah. lessons from Joe Satriani, yeah. you know, Eric Johnson's in the mix with all that stuff, Ingve Malmsey, like there's plenty of vocal music in and, in and around mm -hmm. all this stuff too. Yeah. But there's a particular niche that is this instrumental guitar rock thing that I've kind of been a part of. And that record is firmly in that. So as a scope of, you know, what was I trying to do with the record was really hard to convey really concrete concepts in instrumental music. You know, mm -hmm. when you're writing a vocal tune, you can just come out and say it like you can use poetry or whatever, and you can allude right. to things you can use metaphor simile. There's lots of things you can do with language. But in music, it's completely open to interpretation. Like mm -hmm. you can, you could just call it part A. Right, 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 right. And, and, and that's it, you know, and here comes part B. Right. So, indeed. And, and there's a lot of older symphonic music that was just written for whatever key it is. That's it, what has it, did, a, indeed. Right. It, it has a work number now because yes. scholars have gone back and they've cataloged all of this stuff. Mm -hmm. But not everything had a title. Like, like that's a modern idea that we're going to title everything. Right. Um, and what's interesting is titling things that are abstract, like instrumental music. It puts a construct on a thing. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm already telling you, like, I want you thinking somewhere around this sphere of the universe and that's kind of what this is going to be about like if i wrote a, a song called um you know uh rancid rottweiler or you know cheeky wiener dog something like that like <laughs> if you've had an experience with a rottweiler or many right right you could have, yeah or a wiener dog like you you've already got a picture of the dog in indeed your mind. indeed and, and if i say he's cheeky you're like i know i know cheeky dogs i do <laughs> So you're already bringing some of your experience like that's right. it's I, I can't tap into your experience all yeah. i can do is say i have experience with this probably other people too so here's mm -hmm. just my absurd take on this so yeah. I've, I've already got you just i'm personalizing it for you by, mm -hmm. by putting it in a construct that you know brings it to you so like very thoughtful about how i titled all of the songs you know the song two of five is specifically about me being mm -hmm. the second of five children and just right you know, not that we should have a whole bunch of attitude or, or, you know, be too big for your britches, but I am kind of playing funny a little bit with that stuff. Like this is where I come from, you know, right. Indeed. cause you know, when you're the second of five kids, you're not at the top of the pecking order. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, for that tune to come out swinging with all that attitude is oh, exactly, man. that's the kind of shit a second child does. It's great. You know, it's like just pushing the older one out the way, like my, uh, that's Listen, kind of I, the idea. I, once again, I just can't say enough how much I really, it's one of my favorite, favorite, favorite songs. Thank no you. No doubt. And, it's interesting and, and, you pick up on the 70s thing, because that's it's a little bit of like, I was trying to do a modern sounding record, but I definitely mm -hmm. did some things that were late 70s, early 80s, kind of, right. you know, the whole middle section sounds like, you know, could have been part of a Star Trek movie soundtrack kind of a thing. And I was specifically thinking about all of that stuff, because that's, just things about me. I love Star Trek. I love Star right. Wars. I love all oh, of that 70s guitar heroes and, yeah. you know, that warm kind of vintage analog sound, you know. I, and, and I'm glad you said that because I always, when I first heard it, I'm telling you, I was just like, man, where am I right now? And that's how I am with music. I believe music is a time machine and, and music takes you to places. And a lot of times I hear things, I'm back there again, Fort Benning, Georgia, 
or Charleston, you know, being just a little kid. And I'm like, man, I just enjoy all of this stuff so much. But two or five, every time I hear it, I'm just like, I want, it's like, I want the world to hear that song. I want everybody to feel what I feel when I, I hear that song. I just think it's just something super special to me. I mean, I mean, it really is not that I think it's something super special to me. It is now. So I'm going to jump around here a little bit. Yeah. Wormwood. Wormwood. All right. So, so on the Fozzy album and, uh, I'm actually on there. <laughs> yes. It's a beautiful thing. Let me tell you something. To me, best song on that album. I know it's like, you know, an hour and 35 minutes long. I'm exaggerating, of course. <laughs> How long is it actually? It's like 14 minutes. 14 minutes. But it takes you on a magnificent ride. And Chris, listen, Chris's vocals and, and the subject matter, it all... So what what inspired that? Was it something that you and Chris worked together uh, on and, and Rich and everybody? Or, or what inspired that song? That's, that's an interesting one. Like, really, I wrote the music off of lyrics that I already had of Chris's. Like, there was a little bit of a period in there. And, and of course, me and Rich living so close to each other. Like, we went to the gym all the time. And we, mm -hmm. Just always conspiring about what we're going to do. What's the next Mojo move going to be? Right. What's the next Duke project going to be? Right. You know, what what are we doing with Fozzie? And we were kind of um, not even officially on a hiatus or anything like that. But, you know, it's the one difficult thing about working, you know, in a band with Chris. It's like you want to work all the time, but you can really only work when he's available. When he was available. That's right. You know, and at that time, he was he did a bunch of movies for like Sci-Fi Channel and all kinds of stuff. Like he was really like he was working every angle he had available to him, right. you know, and, and rightfully so. I mean, that's, it's kind of the thing you hustle in your late teens and your twenties so that you can get yourself into a position to where, right. you know, you can start calling the shots of well, like, I want to do that. I want to do that. You know, whether it's about mm -hmm. making your money or making your name, you know, and, and Chris certainly is phenomenal in his career. Like he's, he's had so many successes that it, it, it's, it boggles the mind his work yeah. ethic and he's out there he's out there doing it and uh and ladies and gentlemen yeah. we're talking about chris jericho I was say, I might need yeah. Name. Yeah. <laughs> we're yeah. talking we're speaking about chris but but it's like you know we know him mike knows him even better right, right. than i know him so you know so it's like, like it's, it's, it's love so, it's, it, yeah so it it is chris jericho um so that was that was one thing that was it, it was both a blessing and a curse because on the one side you know i wanted to you know as a hired gun in fozzy Mm -hmm. Nothing would have made me happier than for one of the records to take off and for us just to be on the road for 200 straight dates in a year. And I, I, right. I think all of us that were playing in Fozzie would have been cool with that. Like, I really love traveling and, mm -hmm. you know, I didn't have any small kids at home, so I, I, I didn't feel like I was going to miss out on anything like that. Right, and, in, right. and in particular, Indeed. there weren't going to be any small kids at home because my wife and I had been through some fertility clinic stuff. Right. And, just wasn't an option for us yeah. to, to do all that stuff. So love, love. I'm saying love, love to her. Love, love. Hug, hug. So we had, a, <laughs> we had a big talk about that at the time. It's like, well, there's really nothing to stop me. You know, mm -hmm. like if, if we can bear the pressure of whatever brokeitude I'm about to experience, you know, I don't want to half go for the ring. Right. I, I, I just want to go for it. No net, no parachute. Just like I'm just reaching yeah. and I'm just going to go out there. And, and I applaud you. You've been, you've been doing it, man. So to me, that would have made me super happy to if we could have gone out for two, three hundred dates straight. Mm -hmm. um, but obviously, with Chris's schedule, that's impossible to do that right. because he was dipping in and out of the WWE at the time, plus movies and so on and so forth. Yes. Plus everything else that he does too, like he's got an incredible podcast. He podcast does, books. He's got like an XM radio show. Right, like right. He, he's a guest on uh, Eddie Trunk show, like on right, the right, show. indeed. Like, so I mean, <laughs> my man's dance card is full. Yeah, no, no, no doubt. But one blessing from that, especially working in the entertainment industry, you know, is getting to see his his professionalism and everything that he was doing, you know, and how he was able to execute all of the different things that he was putting himself in demand for also made us have to think about, well, like, how are we handling the stuff that we're doing? You know, so when we do do a Fozzie thing, we need to make sure that, like, we're not just kind of half doing it. Like, it's on that level. We got this minute to do it. Let's let's do the hell out of it. And you know, when there was a break and we were doing some mojo stuff, all right. You know, like no plan B for anything. Like right, it's just right. full force on on all that stuff. So it was during a period there where 
Chris had a bunch of lyrics and he had sent them to Rich. Um, and we had been working on like Southern Born Killers was mm -hmm. out for a little while at that particular right. point, which is, is, as everybody listening knows, as Lord Nelson's introduction to yes, the, the, the Stuck Mojo worldwide yeah. family, um, <laughs> which is great. Um, so we were kind of talking about what were the designs, because you guys have gotten a lot of attention for uh, uh, Southern Born Killers, mm -hmm. uh, in particular Open Season. Right. You know, that, that had gotten some controversy. I mean, our, not just controversy, I remember like Rich had gotten some legitimate threats that, <laughs> that made it worrisome about going out on the road. Um, like it, all that shit was real. And all that, you know, this is 2005-ish. So, I mean, September 11th hadn't been that long. So right. we're all still trying to figure out like what's going on in the world with all this stuff. TSA is now a thing and you know, we're, yeah. we're looking at everybody, we're sniffing everybody's shoes, you know, <laughs> like the whole thing. You know, I'd show up in an airport, you know, my beard wasn't so gray at the time, but I'd let it wild out when we go out on the road. And like, there was a time I'd get stopped for a while. Like, cause I, right, like, right, right, some, right. some crazy looking, I mean, maybe <laughs> Dave Mustaine, when I met Dave Mustaine, Chris Jericho loves his story. He was excited to, to meet me. He had seen us backstage. We played the download festival. Saw uh -huh. and, uh, and Chris came running into the trailer after we played. He's like, dude. Dave Mustaine watched us play. He was backstage watching you play the whole time. And he was saying some really nice things about you. He want, really wants to meet you. And I'm like, yeah. okay. <laughs> let me, let me doing my nails and I'll be right out there. And I walk out to a little courtyard area and like, there's a bunch of people hanging out there. Derek yeah. Rinian is hanging out. I'm a huge, he was there to play with uh, Billy Idol. Steve Stevens was there. I'm mm -hmm. a huge Billy Idol fan. I'm a massive Steve Stevens fan. Mm -hmm. I'm a huge Derek Sherinian fan. Mm -hmm. So while I'm waiting to talk to Dave Mustaine, you know, just kind of hanging out in the courtyard with a bunch of people. So I just walk up to anybody I recognize, which happens to be, you know, all these guys. Right. And uh, had a really amazing conversation with uh, Derek Sherini, and he had just recorded a record with Alan Holdsworth, another giant in, in the instrumental guitar world who is no longer with us. Um, I just got to talk about that and what was it like to work with Holdsworth and all this stuff. And then feel the tug on my arm and it's Chris pulls right. me over to Dave Mustaine and like I didn't have like I didn't have much of a beard I mean like four days scruff which for me is a lot but right. I mean your beard grows fast uh, yeah. definitely looking at wash and I don't know I, I guess Mustaine had a thing for a while like no beards and Megadeth like just it, it just looks sloppy or whatever I don't know what his thing was so he's shaking my hand he's a tall dude like you mm -hmm. shaking my hand looking at him, he's like you look like a terrorist <laughs> you need to shave. And then somebody got his attention and he immediately went off. And that was it. That was the entire, like, Dave Mustaine really? was my heroes growing up when I was a kid. Yeah. And like, I was like, wow. <laughs> and then as soon as I look back, there's Chris Jericho right here. Like, that was awesome. <laughs> I, was like, I was like, I think he blew me off. He's like, no, 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 that was amazing. <laughs> it's like, he definitely talked to you. I'm like, yeah. Right. All you guys heroes, Chris is too. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. Like, Funny, funny stuff. So like, maybe Dave Mustaine was right. Maybe it did look like a terrorist. Um, <laughs> but anyway, this is going to be a six hour show if I don't get to the point with some of my stories. So, so Rich had a bunch of lyrics, right. and he was wanting to work on what was going to become, you know, the great revival. There was a lot mm -hmm. of stuff he was working on could have been the great revival could have been the next Fozzy record could have been anything, right. you know, Rich is just constantly writing. He's very mm -hmm. prolific like that. So when he was looking at some of the stuff, like we had to be happened to be talking about it, either I can't remember if he came to see my little flamenco duo play. He would him and Julie would come out and do that sometimes, or, mm -hmm. or we might have been at the gym or out on a walk or something, just talking, you know, as we do. And he's like, Man, I'd like to send you some of the lyrics. He's like, some of the stuff, I don't know what to do with it. You right. know, and we got some time. He's mm -hmm. like, it would be kind of cool, you know, to to take a bit of a producer's seat. Cause like at that point, he'd seen what I'd done with two of five. Right. which is the only thing that I had produced up to that point. Mm -hmm. And he dug it and he was like, this, maybe there's something there. Why don't you do some, and then show me what you got. Just do right. some writing to some of these tunes. Mm -hmm. And Wormwood was not one of the ones that grabbed my ear. Like a, really? he sent me all of them. And I had started writing for, a, uh, there's a tune called uh, Paris Cavadia Catrophobia. Right. How mm -hmm. you say that, the, the Irrational Fear of Friday the 13th. Yeah. That that one got me because it was like, that's such a weird word to say. Like, I really yeah. want to get kids to chant that at a rock concert. Mm -hmm. because that that seems like a challenge that I'm, I'm up to. 
So right. I started doing some ripping around that. And then I just, I probably had, I don't know, six different ideas mm -hmm. for various things that they were all a little bit in, in undress, just, just some things that I thought, well, this is groovy. And I think I can marry this up with some fuzzy ideas. Right. And uh, we got together one time and we went through my hard drive and Rich was like, yeah, yeah. I th you know what it was? He was looking for stuff for the great revival mm -hmm. because there was some pressure. We had, uh, we had that tour with Volbeat coming up and our label at the time, they wanted to do a music video for whatever was going to be, you know, the, the lead single off of the record. Right, right, indeed. Um, they were also on the hook, which is very unheard of at the time and probably completely unheard of now. Um, but they were on the, the hook for some tour support for us to do that tour with Volbeat. Right. But they wanted to take delivery of the finished record at, by a certain date. Mm -hmm. um, oops. Sorry, a little window popped up. Um, mm -hmm. By a certain date. So we had to make some concessions. So we were looking around at different ideas. And I know with you being in Carolina and us being in Georgia, like we didn't get to confab on all that stuff. Mm -hmm. um, but we went through my hard drive and he was like, man, all this stuff is really great. But not for stock mojo. He's like that. That stuff really would be better suited for Fozzie. I'm like, well, that's crazy because that's what I was writing it for. Right. So, when we get back to that business, you know, we can mm -hmm. review some of those ideas. Um, I did start writing one other song specifically for the Great Revival. I don't even know if you ever heard the demo for it. Um, and just that was one of the last things where I had gotten it roughed out to a place, to where I'd sent it to Rich. Rich had put some sample drums on it. Just it, it needed a loop just to give it some shape because mm -hmm. I wasn't wasn't crazy about programming drums like i would just yeah. write to a click track and i still kind of prefer to do that mm -hmm. you know it, let something let something have some room you know because mm -hmm. once i get into drum programming i'm kind of telling the drummer what i want them to do right you know? and in in a certain in some particular circumstances like if i feel like i need to get the point across i'll do that mm -hmm. but for the most part i think if i write well enough to the click it's really interesting to send something to a a great drum frank or like rodney or like Steve right. or Mike Froge, who plays yeah. in my band, the Dreaded Marco. Yes, indeed. Um, and just see what, you know, what they'll come up with. Because oftentimes they're picking up on something that maybe I'm overlooking. And mm -hmm. it, it makes the collaborative part of band writing really fascinating. Because people will come at you with angles of like, oh man, like I was really hearing that as a chorus. And right. you heard it more like a pre-chorus or more like right. a verse. Yeah. And now like you get rid of this that wimpy little chorus or verse that I thought I had. Now I've got this anthemic verse that was supposed to be an anthemic chorus. Like now I got to write some shit, you know, mm -hmm. to make a chorus that's going to stand up to, you know, the hooky verse that we got going on. So I love that process. Mm -hmm. Anyway, we ended up checking swing on that because that was one of the last things of like, we got to take delivery of this record. Like, let's not worry about that. Let's mm -hmm. get because this tour is going to be one for the ages. And, and still, I tell everybody, I have a lot of favorite moments on a lot of favorite tours. That has got to be like, it's going to be top three for the rest You're of the You're answering life. a lot of the questions I had already. Yeah. Well, you answer the questions now. Yeah, <laughs> like that's definitely a top three for me. I, like so Woo! many beautiful things happened on, on, like we were treated so well by all yes! of the OB crew. Like the guys in the band were super awesome. And it, what a beautiful time to, to be on the road with them too, because you know, you say Volbeat now, and Volbeat has been doing their thing for a minute. Minute you now, know, yeah. This is this is 2008 when we got to do that tour, right? And like, right. they had just earlier that year done a main support tour with Metallica. Metallica, yeah. Well, you know, we caught them. Um, I introduced them to, to the whole crew. He oh, got nice. to meet everybody up in Charlotte. We went up and hung out with them a little bit, and. Um, I'm really you know, bad. Like, I, I'll ping the guys on Facebook every so often, mm -hmm. be like, "Hey, what's up?" And right. like. When they're coming through town, I'm the world's worst about being like, hey, man, it's your boy. Yeah, I'd they're in like, Vegas I, right I, now. I, yeah. I, I'd love to just come hug your neck. And I know that, like, yeah, they're out west right now. Like, yeah, they're, they're in Vegas. Around. They're in Vegas. Uh -huh. I should probably hit up, too, and the boys, you know, like, it'd be great to see all them cats, man. Yeah, 100%. They're all of them. Yeah. I'm, I'm so bad about that. I'm so bad about that. <laughs> but um, in any case, we we did all the stuff that we needed to do to make that tour happen. We can come back to that because it does a, it's like an anecdote on the point to the point. By the time we got done with all of that stuff, like we got home, I think we were all exhausted. I remember I had fallen on that tour and right. like really messed up my back. Right. Um, it, like I still haven't fully recovered from that. Like I oh. still have ongoing back stuff from that. Mm. It's, 
maybe that's just part of the age thing too. It's like, aging, man. I, I feel you. Like I'm, I'm don't feeling. Say, don't say that too loud. He'll start clowning me. Yeah. 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 <laughs> hey man, that's why I'm here. That's you why I'm here. Since I'm the womb. <laughs> <laughs> um, so like I got home and like it was you know we always lean out for tour you know because there's going to be a lot of pictures. We were on the cover of Art Shock magazine. Yeah. Earlier yeah. in that year, like. We, like we were expecting, like it's gonna be some photography on the story. Like, so you train for it. You you diet, mm-hmm. you do all the things. You mm-hmm. you don't want to go out there looking like you just crawled out from under a rock, which is right. currently what I'm going for right now. <laughs> um, so like we we had talks about a treatment for a, a video for I think the fear. The I fear, think, was, yeah. What yeah. We we're gonna do and like they talked like, about that. I thought that was gonna happen. Yeah. We were gonna get attacked by like mm-hmm. trash. Been ready to the trash bags like kind of like a Missy Elliott type it, thing. It was it was the treatment was real. I was, was looking cool. forward to that. Yeah. yeah, but it was going to involve us like running and like mm-hmm. one of the things that I had done, you know, in the two years leading up to that. Like I guess it's really been only about a year and a half, but like I had quit smoking cigarettes finally, mm-hmm. and part of how I did that was running. Right. You know, I'm not a sports guy, but mm-hmm. you know, running it was a really good incentive for me to not want to pick up a cigarette right you know even after like the the psychological stress of wanting to pick up a, a smoke is really awful but when like you know it's going to hurt your running mm-hmm. you're like but running's really good for that stressful i just want to get some stuff off my right off my chest anyway it, it kind of just became the supplanting so like i never had the thing where you know i ate too many ho-hos or whatever at the end of the night because right. i'm just mm-hmm. like i'm upset i can't smoke so i'm gonna have all this ice cream and jump right um, so I didn't do all that stuff. So I didn't get fat afterwards, mm-hmm. but I kept on running. Yeah. So I, as soon as we got home from tour, I kept up with my run and thinking, well, we're going to be doing, it's going to be physical. Like mm-hmm. I'm definitely going to run. I, I don't want a half run from a, a bag. If a bag right. is chasing me down the road, like I need to right. look like I'm terrified, <laughs> you know? So I'm going I'm to I'm train out for this. You know, I don't know. Right. I don't know what I'm doing. Last time I was in a music video, I was just standing on top of a building, you know? Right. I, fortunately, I didn't have to jump. I just right. had to stand Indeed. there, you Indeed. know, this this is going to require me to do some movement. So I'm going to treat it with all the respect it's due. Um, fell, fell out while I was running at one particular point, you know, just pulled the back muscle out. And like, mm-hmm. I remember like, it was just too cold and I just wanted to get my run in and didn't stretch, didn't warm up. So got about a mile away from the house. Yeah, man, feeling every piece of being 18 when I was really closer to 38. <laughs> <laughs> And probably for about an hour, just laid out in the neighbor's yard, like couldn't roll really? over. Man, yeah, man. Wow. If your lower back has ever gone out, it is of, no joke. Of course, yeah. yes. Yeah. A, a few, no listen, a few yeah. times doing the most simple thing for me. Yeah. It's it's always the simple things. Like I'll go to just like I'll know it's been touchy, and if I have to lift a thing, you know, support my weight, you know, I'm on my heels, like I'm lifting, you know, using my legs, not my knees, like you know, using my back, like doing everything right. But then I go to pick up, I don't know a ball of fur that's on the <laughs> carpet so, and like you know you just reach it the wrong way or you go to tie your shoes and you're like now i'm stuck down here yeah, yeah, trying, to, trying to tie my shoes and i'm just going to be down here um that's bad experiences like that so that had kind of happened all around the time of like you know what's happening with with the new record what's happening with this video and mm-hmm. rich went into writing mode he just kind of disappeared he just went mm-hmm. into writing mode um as one does when one's writing, like yes. we we all kind of do that. I'm I'm probably the most guilty of just shutting everything out when I do that. Right. Um, so I just had no sense of what's happening. It's like, man, we just did this record, you know. We just did this big tour, and you know, I'm You're real expecting. susceptible. I'm susceptible to those post tour blues. I don't know if you you got them a whole lot, but <laughs> it's pretty common for a lot of people who travel, not just traveling in bands, but especially traveling in bands. Like, it takes a lot of energy to do that work mm-hmm. you know it, it, not to say that it's the hardest work in the world i mean military work is hard like there's being a doctor is hard to be a cancer doctor is hard like there are definitely harder jobs out there than being a right. guitar player but it does take an awful lot of energy and it does take an awful lot of emotional and, and psychological fortitude um so it takes a lot just to ramp up just to be ready to do the work before you go out on the road and then like you don't want to let your mood kind of sour while you're on the road because you're living in a tin can with however many other dudes Man. like i i gotta be cool for the family you know I yeah, might be right, having right, a bad right. day, but that's not your fault 
And that's good. not anybody else's here's mm-hmm. fault. I just got to get over myself, you know, yeah, and it's, it's, yeah. it's a, it's a good thing to learn about just how to live with people, you know, to, to, no be, doubt. to be someone that's cool to be around regardless, right. like a day goes shitty. I know some people like they're out with their band and like <laughs> some interview wants to reschedule. They go off in a tissy fit and you're like, what, yeah, what? come on. You, man. you know me. I was like, there. you know me. I was like, man, I'm not trying to feel any of that badness, man. Let's just have a good time, man. You know, yeah. cause because with, with Vengeance and Vendetta and Ten Side and, and I mean, listen, we just had a great time with Lies and uh, well, you, yeah. you were you were there on the Lies one, but um, were you there with Lies? No, I was not. Yeah, Lies. I, and, I think that was the one just after me. Lies and uh, my boys, uh, Black Swan. Anyway, Black Swan. yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, just all great guys, man. All great bands to tour with and uh, just love. Pray, play, play. Oh no, but, go ahead. But, oh, no, Mike, go ahead and finish. Yeah, I'm sorry. Okay. But like I came home and I probably had a little bit of tour blues, you know, because it's a lot. You know, you get a lot of attention. It's exciting. You know, you come home, you're not a superstar at your house. You know, there's all that business of like you back to the regular job. You know, yeah. you got you got toilets to clean and laundry yeah, to do. Yeah. And, and, you know, you, all right. just, hold on, hold on, quick, quick sec. I remember so my daughter was going to MUSC, right? she was just graduating. So I'm down there, it's my father and everybody were down there and we're sitting in a restaurant eating and it's all of us. And so at the time it was, we would have just been going on stage, right? And I said, man, I'm so bored right now. My wife looked across at me and she's like, what do you mean you're bored? I was just like, no, I'm just saying like right now, we're going on stage, we're, we're you know, the hype of it. Uh, we're about to have a good time. She just looked at me like, I was like, no disrespect to what we got going on. I'm just telling you, you know, when you're out there for a whole month and you're doing what you're doing and then it's like, it is just what you said. Yeah. It's, just it's like, like wow. all this energy and you just, mm-hmm. you're dealing with it, dealing with it, dealing with it. And then the ride stops, Yeah. you know, and then you're just dealing with this, you know, I'm behind this slow ass walker at the grocery store. Like, come on, man, you know, pick your cheese. Let's go. <laughs> and, you know, you, you're trying not to be mean to people because, like, you're a slow walker at the grocery store, too. And hey, listen, you know? <laughs> that's them, too, man. Listen, they're the wildest dudes, man. They made me laugh every day, man. I just shook my head, man, because they're some wild dudes. Mm-hmm. Just, but listen, we just had a good... So, so Jay, free, ask that question. So, like, I know you maybe had banked on it a little bit before how you wish that the one song would have made you go on 200 dates, you know what I'm saying, and all the touring and all that. So I want to know what's the best part about touring and, and what's the worst part about touring, you know what I'm saying? What, what experience you had when you went on there? I know you touched on it a little bit before, but... I think the best the best part about touring, there, there's a, a, a few things for it, for me. Um, one getting to play music in any capacity for a living is a blessing. Like it's, mm-hmm. it's an honor that is, should never be taken lightly because, mm-hmm. you know, it's not even about, you know, you deserve to be there. Like, no, 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 you worked and it just so happened that you found yourself in the right place with the right people making the right kind of music and a lightning bolt struck. Mm-hmm. And it resonated with an audience who are willing to come check you out to a point where you can actually sustain any kind of a tour, man, it is so overwhelmingly humbling to know that, mm-hmm. um, you know, it, it's not enough just to be a great guitar player or, or, or whatever, like that's not going to bring somebody to a concert hall. You know, it, it's, it's some other almost undefinable thing. You know, it's, it's why everybody's looking for the formula in, in the music industry, right? Because it's almost undefinable. And then somebody comes along and like, you know, whether it's Elvis or the Beatles or it's Michael Jackson or Prince or David Bowie, you know, any one of these guys, like you, you can point to and be like, that's what it is. But what Prince did doesn't work when everybody else does it or tries to do it. Prince just was unashamedly, unapologetically himself. So. And somehow he just stuck with that. He, he yeah. had whatever fortitude it was to just stick with that. And man, if you watch any early, early interviews with Prince, like, you you know, we, 
we boys on, on Prince, like <laughs> when you watch some early, early TV interviews with Prince, man, he's so awkward because he's not groomed for press yet. Right. You know, I, I remember one thing. It was uh, it was either American Bandstand or something. American, like American Bandstand. Bandstand. Yeah. Yeah. And they're asking him, like, because he plays all the instruments all and all that instrument. stuff. And, like, Clark, they're yeah. asking questions about it. And he was just like, like, it's weird. Like, what are you asking me? Like, why, why <laughs> does it, does what everybody I do? do? It's just what I do. Yeah. I just, you know, it, it's the most honest, like, he, he is, he has this really beautiful naivete about him in, in right. that he's, He's just so focused right. and he never loses that, even right. though he gets much better groomed to do in the press and, and yeah. all of that stuff. Like, man, he could, he could throw some sass around in an interview. Yes, he like the way it was going. 100%. He, he's every bit as entertaining in an interview as he was. 100%. Like, he, he never lost that bit of focus of like, well, I know who I am. Mm -hmm. I know exactly what it is that I'm doing. But that now you right. tell you at the beginning of like, I think he just, he was never going to fail. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He may never have done, you know, what we know as Purple Rain or right. anything after that. He mm -hmm. may not have had a concept of that. Right. And if he did, it might have stopped him, you mm -hmm. know. But I think he just, like, he was never going to fail because this is, is what I do. It's just, I, I'm me. Mm -hmm. I'm just, I don't know what else I'm going to do. But be You me. know what I think it really is, though? He's a Nelson. <laughs> <laughs> I knew he was going to say that. I knew he was going to say that. Listen, I mean, Mike, it's, Mike it's you know forever that I told them that we were related to Prince because of that Nelson name. He said I so let good. them know that since they were kids, they were just like, aren't we related to Prince? I, like, of you are. I, used, yeah. to go, I used to go to school and tell people we were related to him. Because we used to put in a, a, we are. I mean, I'm just saying. Well, you can tell, like, the height thing is definitely, yeah, that's why. like, yeah. <laughs> that's a total thing. But, but I think, like, that that's an honor just being able to do that on tour yeah. um so people showing up for that stuff i love going places mm -hmm. i'm so interested in culture and people and life yeah. you know we here let's check it out mm -hmm. and being a professional musician and getting to tour whether it's you know with my own band or being a hired gun for another band or or any mm -hmm. any level of it that i've done i've always appreciated that aspect of it just getting to see some places and Eat local food, drink local wine. You know what's what? What's the vibe? What, what's happening right here? Man, it makes every day such a like it. It points out a failing in my regular everyday life because mm -hmm. I get on tour and I'm, all of that appreciation wakes up with me, and yeah. I need to carry that appreciation every day in my regular yeah. everyday life because right. you wake up just like so exhilarated to see like what's here. What's what's right. on this planet? What, what, is, yeah. what is this human experience that I'm having today? Because it's completely different than yesterday. Mm -hmm. And that's true. Like even during these weird times where I've hardly left the house for a couple of years now, it's like mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I should still have that same reverence for like this is life. And today could be completely different than any other day if I choose to see it for as truly unique and as special as 100%. it is. So that's another favorite part of touring is that it does show me all the best things about just what it means to experience life on a day-to-day -day basis. Mm -hmm. But the lesson is, you know, definitely humbling in that you got to take that home. It's not just because, you know, you're on tour and you're a rock star or something. That's why life is great. It's mm -hmm. like, no, life is great. And you are definitely on the right side of something. Somebody's mm -hmm. good grace, God's good grace or whatever, to where you're going to get to see a little bit of it while you're doing your thing. You know, it, it's, there's, there's, it's worth more than money than in anything. Like it's just so and, amazing. And, and that's why I think I think Bones so much. People just don't know that that's that's my dude. I mean, that's my dude. And I thank him so much for bringing me to Stuff Mojo yeah, because man. without him, it wouldn't have wouldn't have happened. And then I thank Rich for saying like, "Hey, I see some talent in this guy right here. I appreciate it." And we just had so much fun, and my mind was just so open to doing what we. We did, and I, I can remember, and, and I want you to help me remember this. We went to, we were somewhere in Germany, maybe it was in Austria. Didn't we go see, uh, what was the, um, was it Be was it Beethoven? Oh, Mozart's, oh. Mozart's birth film. Most, Salzburg, yes, so, right. Salzburg. So when we went there, and I know we went through this little area, and we went back to this courtyard where they had all this stuff behind there, and then the mountains were there, the big, big wall, and I can remember, 
I just looked around and Sean was with me. Cause you went and you went to the uh, the museum thing. You were like, I'm yeah, going in. Me and Bill Ebner, Bill who right. was a really good friend of ours. He, he did the tour with me. Right. Yeah. And so, so Sean was there and then I just looked around and this was probably the first time I just looked at all the beauty of it. And I was just like, man. And Sean said, you wish they were here, don't you? And I was just like, yes. I wish my family was here to see all of this. Wow, this is just unbelievable. Because I came back and I, Mike, I talked about you guys. I talked about, I know my wife is just like, will this guy please stop talking about this? But I yeah. couldn't help it because I was transformed. I was a different person. And all I wanted was for my children. I'm, my wife's super claustrophobic because she would never do it. But I yeah. still wanted them all to experience things like that. And Jay's working on his music like crazy. And I tell him, I, I said, I hope it just pops off to where you get, of course he played basketball in Iceland and all those kind of things like that. And he's, you know, he, he's traveled a bit. Yeah, yeah. But I want him to really enjoy it and see it and, and feel that vibe of what's going on because uh, it's, it's amazing. And that point to me is that's the worst part about touring. Yeah. Is like you have this amazing family in the band, hopefully, you know, mm -hmm. and I would definitely have to say I've been very fortunate in all of the bands that I've got to do any bit of extensive touring with right. that we've all been family. Like I've just lucked into just the most, you know, wonderful groups of people who are, you know, funny and personable and can shrug off any little bits of, you know, right. bullshit from the day. They right. don't let that ruin the whole experience. Um, and it's beautiful that you get to have that experience. But then the other side of that is exactly that. Mm -hmm. You end up thinking, man, I, I, I want my family to see this. Right. I want my family to be here with all this stuff. And I know if if you can achieve a certain level of status with it, not that, you know, not that, you know, wife and kids want to live on the road. That's, right, that's right, right, right. definitely not a thing. But, you know, it's it's always nice when they can go for a while. You know, right, indeed. Say you're going to be playing through Paris is like, well, you know, you could bring your significant other, right. you know, and you can go shopping in Paris during the day while I'm doing all the, the stuff that I've got to do. Indeed. And then you get to have dinner in Paris. Right. With your significant other, like, or your kids, mm -hmm. you know, that's, that's amazing to get to, to share that stuff. I never have had that experience. Like it, right, it's always right. been, you know, put myself in hock. So, you know, roll and change. So, <laughs> So I can eat for the first few days before, you know, before those first couple of shows, you know, you just, uh, you just out there, man. <laughs> man, know? listen, what, what do we do though? Thank God for the, um, um, the rider, you know, oh, thank yeah, God yeah, yeah. when we go to these places and, and, and Jay, let me tell you something, man, we were confiscating everything, juice, yes, drinks, candy, ham, cheese, whatever. I mean, listen, we put it all on the buses. So that, that kind of sustained you doing yeah, certain you things as you said. You know, you but I was day. like, because if they were going to give us a per diem, I'd rather have a per diem than they cook than cook for us because you know I wanted to have, um, I wanted some hobnobs in England most definitely. I was drinking Lord Nelson tea, and I can't think of the other tea that was so good, but they don't sell it over here. I tried to get it, but they don't sell it over here. But um, a proper roast that we yeah, had, a proper um, Sunday roast. But what's my other thing uh, that I always talk about, uh, Preen? Um, not the heroes, but the um Oh yeah, 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 yeah. The kebabs, man. Kebabs. Yeah. I don't eat meat anymore, but I'm telling you, the kebabs. Man, it, it'll pull you off the wagon. <laughs> man, <laughs> I listen. No, I, I'm telling it. him that we're 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 gonna do it, you know, whether it be plastic catastrophe or whatever, we're going to do it. He's going to see it. But yeah. you know, he's got a song that's coming out soon. And and he's just working and doing his thing, video working on his video right now. Well, he's already shot it. So um, listen, things are great, things are love. And and what other question you got for Mike? I know I got more, but go ahead. Um, I, I was letting you go. I mean, no, no, no. Go ahead, ask a question. I should finish the wormwood answer because yeah, finish the wormwood. I, I went off on, so how did that come about? The, the shortest of all possible answers is like when Rich finally picked his head up. Uh -huh. And and we're kind of looking around at stuff like I was feeling like, man, I really wanted to get some writing on this record. And he's like, well, I've kind of written over for everything. And I was like, oh, man, there's no sets of lyrics that you haven't written anything for. He's like, <laughs> I got these three or four that I couldn't figure out anything to do with. If you, mm -hmm. if you got something for them, 
have at it. Send me whatever you got. Right. And one of them was the Paris Catriophobia tune. So I was like, mm -hmm. well, cool. I got a little thing for that. So I immediately just jumped in and started doing some work on that tune. Mm -hmm. And like, I forget what the other song was. It was a title. I don't think it made it on the record either. I, I, mm -hmm. I, it may have made it on a subsequent record, but okay. I, I, I couldn't find anything to do with it. But looking over the lyrics that that Chris had written for Wormwood, you could tell that he was obviously inspired by something like Iron Maiden's Rime of the Ancient Mariner, mm -hmm. this sort of long, epic song format. Um, we're both huge Maiden fans. We're both massive Dream Theater fans. We're, you know, they write long, epic songs, progressive rock kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. And like when you're looking at Rime of the Ancient Mariner, that's it's tipping into the more progressive side of what Iron Maiden did as a metal band. So right. I think we all appreciate that stuff. So when I kept looking, I was like, I know what he, I know, I know what he's talking about. I know what he wants for that, but I didn't have an idea yet. Didn't, didn't mm -hmm. have an idea. Um, but I could pretty much see on that. Like we definitely had a, a symbiotic kind of vibe mm -hmm. on whenever I found the right idea, it was going to be pretty cool. What's interesting is, uh, I kicked around, I don't know, seven or eight different ideas that none of them really stuck mm -hmm. until that little classical guitar part came up. And literally, I was I came up with that doing an exercise where uh, I didn't have a theme. And like, because everything I had thrown at this was not, like I said, it just wasn't sticking. It worked for you, okay. You know, because it's as a long form of, of sort of epic poem, as, as Chris had written it out, it, it didn't lend it, like, obviously, there were stanzas and stuff like that but it was so broken up and and you know i, I didn't reorganize his lyrics at all mm -hmm. it's 98 percent from start to finish exactly the way he wrote it i took okay. a couple i took a couple of liberties with some parts that i needed to repeat like uh when the doom vocals come in about uh uh seven trumpets and all of that business mm -hmm. before the interlude right, where you right. do you know the benediction um <laughs> But I was sitting around with the classical guitar, not for any other reason other than like I was just working out some rhythmic ideas, looking at the scansion of the way the words were lined out, more like a rap tune or something like that. Like, mm -hmm. let, let me just find something rhythmically that's happening here. Right. And as I was picking through a little bit of that, I could I finally fell into a rhythm that I could tell that that I don't know how wittingly Chris put it in there, but it, obviously it was there. It finally I it got hip to it. Yeah. So like the more I leaned into that, then I just kind of turned into that sort of classical guitar magical kind of thing. And I was like, well, that's weird, because that's more like a Rush tune, like an older 70s Rush, Rush tune. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm a huge Rush fan. And he's, yeah. you know, he's from Canada. So I know he's a giant Rush fan. Right. So like, I was like, that's it. I doubled down on that. And if you listen to it, like really listen to that classical guitar a bit, mm -hmm. and then listen to the rest of the tune. <laughs> everything is a variation of that of that okay. like that that little introduction i literally it's beautiful, it's beautiful. Just, I, and i think that's why it, it works without getting so tired that theme and variation thing it's an old classical composer's kind of trick yeah trick it's it's a way of writing you know that uh you know it's it's monothematic i've got more than one theme going on in the tune obviously mm -hmm. but i'm playing with it in lots of different ways that keeps it moving that right. way you know by the time you're 10 minutes into it you're not going like yeah I right. some place to be it. man no you it's know, a I, beautiful ride yes so that's kind of the thing that was the impetus of it is chris's lyrics and just me wrestling with what am i going to do with that and i really kind of just took it as a whole and then beyond that like i think you can tell i was kind of going for beyond the obvious iron maiden rush mm -hmm uh dream theater tool kind of musical sounding references um i really wanted to get a bit cinematic with the way that it developed as a piece of music which was you know allowing for the introduction that you did you know and letting this just fall into this fever dream kind of thing and let it open up like a cinema right. for the mind and a lot of the feeling that i got i don't know if you remember this when we were kids but there was a show i think it was on hbo and it was uh it was uh, the voiceover was done by Orson Welles is mm -hmm. the guy who did it and he was actually in it so like he's doing the talking you know you get to see him he's not just doing the voiceover of the thing 
but it was about Nostradamus and the man who saw tomorrow. Okay. Mm -hmm. And as a kid, especially as a Catholic kid, seeing that show when I was young, man, I cannot tell you how many nights I laid awake <laughs> praying to God, Jesus, <laughs> do not let this whole world end in some kind of nuclear catastrophe. Indeed. Because like the end of that show, if you remember that show about, about Nostradamus, like by the time it gets to the end, like who's going to be this third antichrist? What's this whole thing going to be about? I'm just like, and the music behind it does so much, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So just trying to like capture on that feeling, because like I was so motivated by fear when I was a kid, mm -hmm. I can go back to that feeling because like I have problems with insomnia anyway, right. but like that's a particular period in my very young life where I remember laying awake with a purpose going, oh, you know, like this is, you know, I can't talk to nobody about this because <laughs> it's just a TV show. Like I can't go right. to can't go to church and talk about this because this is just some heretic who just you know he's not in the gospel like it's he's not in revelation he's just talking about revelation what right, is this guy right. yeah. what is he doing you know yeah. like just left in my little preteen mind uh, you know, I, 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 all of all of the fear of like world global destruction and what that means right. and here it is chris lays out these lyrics that are not exactly you know word for word pull from revelation yeah. But mm -hmm. trying to put that, okay, let me let me put this, mm -hmm. this this sort of modern spin on this very old idea, you know, right. that was really sort of the inspiration for what I was trying to get at. I, I yes. don't know how how well I got all of that bit of uh, it out. Beautiful, beautiful. But work. it certainly got me through the writing process. Beautiful piece of work, man. I mean, that's that's that, that's a great one, man. And listen, I want to I want to say this, uh, Rodney Bobo, LSU. Uh, Big Steve, Big Steve, uh, Sean Delson. Um, am I forgetting anybody? Of course, Rich. Of course, Mike Martin. Um, Who am I forgetting? Eric, and of course, Eric Frank. Sanders, Frank Foster. I Sanders. haven't met. I haven't met Sanders and uh, Corey. And um, there was one. It was, but there was one other guy. What's the other bass player? Uh, Dan Dryden. Dan Dryden. He's a beautiful. No, there was one other man. one though, right? Or was it Dan? Uh, years ago it was Dan. Um, other than Sean, when Sean stepped down, there's been a few guys since Sean stepped down. Okay, okay. but that's that's been since my time yeah. I was talking about like when they first started. I can't. I, so, now, 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 Dan's oh, not yeah, a guy. Yeah. With, yeah, I think it was Dan when they first started with the dreads. No, 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 no. That's that's Dwayne. Dwayne. Okay. That's yeah. Because yeah. I knew it was another guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, bones rich. Everybody, man, just just love love to everybody, man. We we just had such a good time. You said that Volbeat tour, which was magnificent. And rest in peace to the beautiful Toad. Hey, yeah, man. shout out to Daniel also. But Toad, um, on that tour, man, we learned a lot about how you do things and how you handle and take care of things. That was big, man. I, I think it opened all of our eyes. Absolutely. And uh, I watched Mike, Mike, Michael do his thing. And, and all the guys, they were just professional. They were just great guys, as you said before. They were truly great guys, and they embraced us. And um, I thank them for it. Volbeat, those guys, those guys are unbelievable guys, man. Truly yeah. are. All the bands that we toured would have been fantastic, though. Every single yeah. one of them. Thanks yeah, to like the lives for seeing the talent, and we did what we did, man. That was a beautiful thing, man. I thank Sebastian, man. I love those guys, man. Laurent, yeah. Matt. I think every tour ends up being my favorite in some kind of a way. Mm -hmm. That is definitely a special one. You know, like, I think just so many so many good things uh, among all of the really bad things that were happening mm -hmm. you know not not interpersonally with us and the band but just at home there was a bunch of stuff going on with family stuff for me yeah it was very difficult right. if you remember the uh the summer tour my stepdaughter having a, a right i definitely remember how's she doing man she's doing great she just graduated from georgia state with her her phd awesome man and uh, she had been teaching at Georgia State for mm -hmm. a stretch. Like she's she's doing fantastic. Like she's still dealing with residual stuff from okay from what happened. Like <laughs> that that is a whole topic that she needs to be on a podcast for. But essentially, right. you know, she had juvenile rheumatoid arthritis and mm -hmm. it went into remission. And it was right. a big problem for her when she was little. Mm -hmm. Thank God it went into remission. But like like a lot of people with JRU, it does come back. And and she right. it came back while she was away at college. Mm -hmm. um, so she went to see a rheumatologist while she was away at college and uh, she was prescribed a particularly heavy medicine that is a precancer kind of medication and 
she had an allergic reaction, which, you know, you, any of us could have that same reaction to ibuprofen right. or any mm -hmm. kind of anti-inflammatory. It's called Stephen Indeed. Johnson syndrome. Mm -hmm. and she had that. It was bad. She basically, you know, it takes two to three weeks for it to have built up in her body, mm -hmm. which means it was going to take like two, three weeks for it to flush out of her system. Mm -hmm. So by the time she started having all the blisters, like she was, they, they put her in a burn unit. They had to keep her debrated because she just sloughed off about 80% like just chemical burns from the inside out, like just wow. the most horrific experience I can imagine a yeah. human being going through. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, first hurdle was surviving it. And we were on tour when that happened. Right. You know, it, the panic of dealing with all that business and, you know, what do we do after that? And then how do we continue caregiving after all of that stuff? Because clearly her, her, her college trajectory changed. She mm -hmm. came back to the state of Georgia and all of that business. So there was a lot. So it was right. it was it was a particularly beautiful tour because I, I needed some something good to happen. Right, indeed. You know, because that was not a good time. You know, right. dealing with all of all of that stuff. You know, and as you can imagine, in, in family stuff, like you're going off to to play tours, and it's my job. You know, and maybe it doesn't make as much money as anybody would like. Mm -hmm. You know, but it's still my job, and I still right. got paid to do it. You know, certainly wasn't on the fast track to getting rich at, at that right. particular point. We already had rich. You, we already had rich, man. <laughs> had you know? rich. What do we need to get rich for? We got him. He's right there. He's, ask him anything you want to. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I mean, as, as you can imagine, the stress of just going away with work at all when, you know, there's so much stuff that's upside down at home, when, yes, especially indeed. when you're dealing with a family illness like that. It right. was very difficult, you know, and. You know, also a bit of the motivation of like, well, you know, why did I need so badly to to get something on the new Fozzie records? Like, mm. well, if if we weren't doing anything with Stuck Mojo, I need something to make some money with. Right, indeed, indeed. It's nice being a hired gun with Fozzie, and you know, mm -hmm. it always paid, and that was uh, right. always grateful for that stuff. But everybody will always say you got to own something, mm -hmm. and if you can own a piece of writing, a piece of publishing, a piece of whatever. You know, because that can do work beyond what I can do in this 24 hours today. Yeah, I thank, I, I thank you for that also, for your knowledge of stuff, because you always spoke about it. You always spoke about it, you know, that we needed to do more on that side of things, yeah. you know, other than just being there. Even though just being there was just great, you know, it was love, but you always spoke about that, you know. And I always, listen, you know, those first, I was just learning. I was just, my mind was just open. I was just watching everything. I was just like, let me see, because I don't know. I can remember having a conversation with Bones. He was just like, it's different out there. It's, you know, and I was just like, hey, okay. I yeah. said, well, I'm going to see. And then, yes, I saw it. So, but I but I still appreciate every single second of, of you know, I don't live my life with regrets. I just live like life lessons. You learn and you yeah. just move on. And that's what, you know, that's what we've been doing. So listen, this has been beautiful. And I, I still, I got many more questions. We're not going to just kill you with questions. But I want to ask you though, yeah. Um, probably two more questions. So when you're, I've, I've got you time for the of, evening. Say again. I've got time for the evening, so we, right, we, hey, we can go long. All right, watch yourself. Watch and, yourself. And you, can, you can chop it up, or watch. we can do that, or we could do this again if we don't get. Hey, hey watch yourself. Listen. listen. Okay, I hear you. Okay, so listen. Do you think it's uh, you creating your own music? Okay, meaning like it's all you. Everything is you. Is that is that difficult or is it? Would you like more input or or do you like having that control of making it? And it's all you. It's you. It's Mike. It's Mike Martin. It's nobody else. It's you. I like both things. You okay. know, you know, it, it, my particular discipline by the time I got to college was uh, music theory and composition. I wanted to be able to write down and formalize an idea and be able to hand it to a group of musicians and be able to convey the ideas accurately through the language of written music. Mm -hmm. um, so that is something I'm particularly interested in because that's a whole other mountain to climb of just figuring out. Jay, you, know, you hear me, he, write, he writes music, so he, he, he can read music. Mm -hmm. Not everybody reads music, you know what I'm saying? He's, he, he may be a little snob music, right? You know, he's a snob, but you know. <laughs> he looks down on us like, hey. <laughs> Hey man, some of the coolest done is with people who don't read music. <laughs> <I'm just laughs> <mad. laughs> but but it's a funny thing, like because yeah. you know it, it was important because I wanted to understand music as a language, and and any of my teachers will will tell you that that I was always mm -hmm. asking questions like, 
how does this work? What's, what's right. going on with this? I remember right. listening to uh, the Mozart Requiem and like, I listened to it, listened to it, listened for months, been listening to it, listened to it, listened to it. Finally, like my mom was doing something in the kitchen. We had a little tape deck in the kitchen where we could listen mm -hmm. to some music. I put it in the cassette, bam, mom, what, what's this? <laughs> my poor mom. <laughs> Here comes the Mozart Requiem, like a, a piece that she has performed a few times. Right, was, yeah, yeah. And she, she does like, and, and like a part comes up. I'm like, what is that? And she's like, what do you mean, what is that? I'm like, that part, like, what is it that's happening there that makes that part so amazing? Like, what is going on with that? And she starts saying, well, you know, there's a sforzando that's going on with the choir and the way they're, for, you know, for, like, I got it. Look down I, to you, very last I got all that. But mm -hmm. what is, what, why? You know, of course, I didn't say this to my mom at the time, like, I, but I would say this now, like, why do I have a giant heart on for this? Like, I can't stop <laughs> listening to this. Right. Whatever Mozart did right here is yeah. everything I want to know right now. Right. I need to understand this. Yeah. And uh, studied with an amazing teacher around the same time I was doing that. A, a guy who's a friend of mine, his name's Tom Yoder, was studying with him in Myrtle Beach. And actually, mm -hmm. he just sent me a piece of music. I'm going to do a guest guitar solo on a piece of music that he's writing, awesome. which is fantastic because this is like 30 years after taking lessons with him mm -hmm. like I, I need to not mess this up <laughs> you know because he's gonna know because he knows right. all the things that i do because he's the one who showed me a lot of them so Indeed. like so i can't do my usual three tricks just those three <laughs> tricks those are my tom yoder tricks that nobody everybody that doesn't know tom i'm like look at these amazing tricks right I'm paying right. attention to this guy you know <laughs> so i can't do tom yoder licks on a tom yoder thing right. that's just that's a funny thing but like we spent a lot of time in lessons me asking questions like but like when you put this stuff together like we go over eric johnson solos and we talk about ingve malmstein and we talk like all these different amazing guitar players and he's just like telling me Here, here's the universe and this is how it works and then there are these celestial bodies and you know then there's these galaxies and things and like there's things beyond things and you're like this guy's telling me everything i want to know about mm -hmm. everything and then i would hit him with like but when you want to put together a solo like that, how does that work? And he's like, man, right. you're asking like other questions. I'm like, mm -hmm. yeah, I don't want to just, yeah. I don't want to just figure out an Eddie Van Halen solo. Mm -hmm. I want to be able to figure out how can I be that creative to where mm -hmm. I can come up with something so wildly imaginative yeah. that there'll be a bunch of young kids going to their guitar teacher and be like this, what is this? I want to play this right here. Right. Explain right. this. Right. I need to, I need to know, I need to understand this. Yeah. And it started me off on this track and like, we spent a lot of time, not just, not just study, because we'd studied jazz. Like we talked about jazz vocabulary and a lot mm -hmm. of that stuff. I had taken jazz guitar lessons before then and classical guitar lessons before then. So I came in with a hodgepodge of knowledge from all over the place that like, right. it's rattling around in here, you know, and all of my teenage hormones can't quite string the ideas together <laughs> into something that coalesces as a cogent idea. Right. You know, because, because I was so weird. As mm -hmm. a kid, like as, as weird as I am as an adult, I was so weird as a kid because I loved virtuosity and exactitude mm -hmm. and not just exactitude in music, but in language and in, in, in communication, mathematics. Like I was just very, I was an intense little guy. For mm -hmm. some reason, all of this stuff just really ticked a lot of boxes for me. So my musical tastes were crazy because I could see all of this stuff. And then I would hear something like Dinosaur Jr. or Nirvana before Nirvana was a, Nirvana. what we know as Nirvana now. And like, I would go nuts for it. And people right. like, why do you like that stuff? You like all of this impossible guitar mm -hmm. stuff. And I'd be like, no, 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 listen to this. It's just a guy beating the hell out of his guitar. Right. So effectively expressive. In a it's way hot, that it's like, hot, man. It's just... Yeah, man, like all of this exactitude, like I can yeah. see the heat coming off of that. But then, you, like everybody could see the heat of what's coming off of right, Kirk right, Lane. right, right. That is just another thing. Like, how can you be that exact but that raw and yeah. that honest? Like to me, that's kind of the thing that I was always trying to do. It's like kind of like the uh, the uh, End Game Hulk, you know, put the brain and the brawn together. Right, and right, and you, and, and you get Professor Hulk, you know, right. it's <laughs> that kind of thing. So as a young dude, I was just trying to figure that stuff out. And like, I could just do a thing and just mm -hmm. like, I'm just going to destroy the place. And I'd go play club dates as a teenager and I'll just destroy the place. Cause I was just a, a uncontainable thing. Cause I didn't know what the hell I was doing. I, I knew right. I couldn't contain it. And it wasn't church. 
that you were being free it, it, of. It, it, it was just like, I'm just here to light myself on fire. That creates the best stuff when, when you are just free to do what you want to do. And that's why I asked that question. Now, let me ask you this question. I was listening to a, a, an interview. Uh, Chuck D was interviewing Quincy Jones. And this has been many years now. And I always tell Jay this all the time. So Quincy Jones said, to get your own style, take 10 of the people you love, artists you love, and take something from each of them. And once you've taken something from each of them, you'll have your own thing. So yeah. who have you taken from that, that has helped you along your way to create that Mike Martin sound? Unashamedly, unapologetically, I take from everybody. Okay. <laughs> All, all the time. You, you may hear some people talk about, man, I'm just trying to be a sponge or man, that kid's a sponge. Like mm -hmm. I try to be the sponge, you know, because right. even like if you walk into a situation and you're like, well, I'm the only musician here. So it's probably not anything I can learn. Mm -hmm. You're wrong. Right. And then you're going to miss something. You're always learn something. That's right. Pay attention. Because everybody's musical and everybody does musical things and they relate to musical things and they express themselves in musical ways. They don't have to be trying to be like, check out my amazing piano skills. They, mm -hmm. It may not be that presentation of it, but if you're willing to be the student, everything is your teacher and everybody's your teacher. You know, it's why I like teaching lessons is mm -hmm. sometimes the way a student asks a question about something that, you know, you can overlook it as a fundamental thing. And they just ask a question from the right perspective. It's like, can I explain it any more directly? Mm -hmm. in a way like how well do i understand that to where i can get right. them to understand that and just in the question makes me question well how do i know a thing i'm already mm -hmm. learning something because I'm, I'm constantly going through this inventory of knowledge whether it's musical knowledge spiritual knowledge religious knowledge interpersonal knowledge knowledge of the self because all of this stuff is really what we're doing mm -hmm. is we're we're studying who we are right we're we're suffering through this human condition, you know, as a blessing, All energy. as as a yeah. gift, mm -hmm. you know, that we wanted to experience the universe this way. And that's why we're here, you right. know, and, and we get to have this amazing experience. And we know it's imperfect. Of course, it's imperfect, you know, but but we're here to do it. And we can only view it through the lens of, you know, it, it's an amazing thing. Like when you're really in the moment, you're not aware of it. Right. Because you're so busy being in the moment, you can't. Being in the moment, it. that's right. But it's like quantum mechanics always comes into play. As soon as you go, and I know we've all had this experience, whether you're with your family or when you're on tour, it's like that that moment when you're like, "I wish they were here." Right. That's the moment when you're not in the moment anymore because you've you've gone beyond it. Because mm -hmm. you know? if you're truly just in the moment, you would have no regret over anything. It's just like the beauty of all of this stuff. But you know when the moment is past mm -hmm. because immediately you're like. I need to share this, like, I, right. I, and they're not here. Right. Like, you immediately are aware of, of that's the other piece of life. Of yes. That connection of, we need to connect with really amazing other spirits in our lives mm -hmm. so that we can share more of these moments together. Right. You know? It's real. Because like so many other things, you know, we we get sick, we have injuries, family members fall ill, and you know, like, we're always tending to one another. We have to care for one another and all this stuff. Right. Like the, the victories, they, 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 man, they gotta be sweet because yes, indeed. You know, indeed. man, they're, they're not as frequent as I had hoped that they would be growing up. You know, you, you mm -hmm. think, man, once I get out of my mom's house, <laughs> man, it's, it's going to be right. It's like everything's just gonna be lining up right. the way that I right. want it to be. And then by the time you're 25, you're having this conversation with your parents. I see what y'all were trying to tell me exactly. <laughs> when I was trying to do this thing, you're like the, the humbling and, and like, indeed, you try to let them know, man. They, listen, they know too much. They, Mike, I've never seen people that know so much. And it's like, we're not trying to, we're just trying to tell them like we've been through this kind of stuff. You know, I, you guys might think it's going a different way, but we've seen it before. It just keeps reprocessing itself. And you know, now we see you guys go, hey, hey man, Come on, y'all. Hey, and, it, and it's kind of the thing, like if, if if we were pursuing enlightenment or any kind of musical or artistic discipline, mm -hmm. there does come a point where you 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 can stand up on your own two feet. You have to, you know, if 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 you stay with the master, you will never become the master. 
So at a certain point, the master has to abandon you. Right. You know, otherwise, you, you know, if you're just leaning on the wisdom of someone else and not willing to lean on the wisdom that you've accrued for yourself and mm -hmm. go out into the void, you know, naked, defenseless, you know, all, all you have is your wisdom of experience. Right. You know, if you're just going to cling to the helm of, you know, the apron of, of the masters constantly, mm -hmm. you know, maybe mastership isn't for you. Maybe, right. maybe that's a thing. And, and I think, I think masters are mentors in our lives. They, they have a way of knowing this stuff. Certainly there've been places where my parents have been way more gracious with me right. over like, they didn't try to tell me, Hey, you may want to slow your roll on that. You, you know, <laughs> there've been plenty of times they did that too, but there've been other no, times. You gotta, let, like, you, gotta let, you gotta let them go through things. He'll know. He, he's going and like, I'll know as soon as he knows it. <laughs> right. <laughs> you know, there it is. There it is. Son. <laughs> hey, listen, that's the honest truth because really with my three, I'm telling you right now, I I, I let them live their lives. I, I believe they have to live their lives and do their thing. Now, if they need advice from me, I'll more give it to them if they need it. You know, I might, they might do something. I might just give them a look, but then I was like, I'm not going to say anything because they have, they've got to go through it and they've got to live their lives. And, and I applaud them on what they have done already. They've gone yeah. far, further than I've gone in my life. And, and I, I love it. I am so thankful that uh, I was afforded the opportunity to spend time with my children, um, go to their sports games and stuff like that. Cause you know, I was always at night and you know, I'm a night guy. And so just being able to go see all of that stuff and then to see all of them graduate from college and to see them even go higher education than that. So it's a beautiful because my daughter right now is working on her doctorate down at, uh, you know, well, tell me that. University of Georgia, she's down there. So anyway, I have a, a niece, beautiful thing. I have a niece about to graduate in Savannah, Sophia, who, I mean, she would have been super tiny last time you saw her. Uh -huh. um, Wait a minute. Hold on. Um, your, your sister's though? Yeah. Sarah's, Sarah's kids. Get out of here. Yeah. Like, really? Yeah, she one, was bald. Yeah. One daughter is, she's at NYU now working on her med degree. Um, I think I and saw then, that. And then this other, her younger daughter is about to graduate high school. And I think she wants to go to UGA as well. Wow. 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 That's awesome, man. Big kids, man. Big kids. Yeah. Yeah. How's, how's Sarah doing? She's doing good. She's but doing her cool good. cool self. Hey, listen, cool as can be. I always, listen, her personality and her disposition, love it. Always. You know, man, I love your mom I, too. So, you I, know, I, it's I, just I, all beautiful. I tell you what, if you want to be an honest man, mm -hmm. you should grow up with a younger sister, like the sisters that I have. And, <laughs> And a mom, like the mom that I have, like, ain't nobody perfect, but man, they're going to keep you honest. Like, there right. they, <laughs> were no games, no games hey, at all. His sisters no keep him on, they keep him on point <laughs> one thing, because listen. Nobody hold me back. He, he, he probably like the, he's, he's the spoiled one. He's the spoiled one. Because my wife spoils that, that individual right there. We spoiled our children, no doubt, but they're, they're great kids, you know. I have, I don't have any complaints about them, but, uh. But I yeah. tell you, like my my younger sister and I, we've been close my whole life because like we're you know I'm two and she's three, so like we're right, right in the middle. Mm -hmm. So like we've got a nice cozy kind of yeah. relationship. But man, like as as we continue to grow up, you know, through our adulthood, like past being teenagers and just whatever all of that mess is about, because mm -hmm. that's a mess. Mm -hmm. When you finally get into your twenties and thirties and you start figuring some things out and you're trying to stand up and you're trying to you know, hopefully having some opportunities, you know, you've been planting for so long, mm -hmm. you know, you, I, I gotta be, something's gotta be ready to reap here at some point. The relationship with my sister now, like I could not have asked for such a powerful person in my life, like really so much more significant than I, I could have ever estimated. I mean, mm -hmm. I knew we loved each other. And right. Like, we always made a point that we got together, even mm -hmm. aside from when the family would bring everybody together. Gotcha. We yeah, always really still cool. got together. We always still talk and we always still do. It's mm -hmm. just, it's an interesting thing that we have a relationship that's just, it's just different. You know, is it better? I, I don't know, it's different. And for some reason we've maintained it in and cultivated it in a, a bit of a different way that, you know, to see her, I mean, I always knew that she was an extraordinary person mm -hmm. growing up, even with your little sister and she's just like, this kid's annoying. Why couldn't I have had a little brother? You know, I got this thing, you know, 
but she was awesome. Even as a little right. sister, she was awesome. And, you know, it, as we grew up, you don't even really realize, you know, how much you need that energy mm -hmm. until like one day you just recognize that like, she's gonna be an amazing person. Like everything that she's doing and everything that life has just thrown at her. And she is just resilient and resilient and resilient and resilient. And like wise in a way that you're just like, like this is not my little sister. You can it, tell it also. It, no, it is, it is my little sister, but like, yeah. This, this is a big person in my life and she's going to be a big person in everybody's life right it's like she already had that wisdom about her already yeah. you know just just yeah. speaking to her just saying like this smart young lady right here you know most definitely most yeah so definitely. I feel like she understands the family dynamic and as families grow and they change over mm -hmm. time because you know the young ones grow up and then the, you know as they grow up then they have little ones and then right. it changes yeah. You know, it's a natural passing of things. You know, we're not the parents we were when kids are small. That, that right. requires a different temperament. When they get 100%. older, the questions get harder. Yeah, it's a different temperament. You got to be there in different ways. You know, right. you, you can't just distract them with a little magic trick like, hey, <laughs> I haven't seen that one, have you? You know, that's <laughs> a grandson right now. You know, got a grandson. So, you know, it's like, hey, he's, he's yeah. all about cars and, and trucks. And that's what he loves. He loves vehicles. He's smart as a whip. And he just something else, and it's just good to see. You know, yeah. it's it's like I, you know, Jay used to be the prince, but now he, we got a new prince in the family. <laughs> and that's that's just the turning of a season. You yes, know? indeed. And, yes, every, indeed. Every, every and we spoil. And listen, we spoil. Yeah. Yes, yeah. indeed. And, and we should. You know, we should spoil everybody in our lives. You know, we, 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 we have should a not spare time. the best. Yeah. So, Jay Parker. See, because we can go on, and, and I'm going to tell you this. We're not going to keep you but so long. We kept you long enough. But what we will do is have another conversation. I think we'll come back, and you got to be on again, man, because this was just good conversation, and that's Absolutely. what's great about it. Absolutely, uh, just listen, I love, I love you guys so much, this. man. I thank you beyond what you would ever know. We, we had such a great time touring and doing the things that we did. I thank you guys for embracing me and, and showing me love, even though – most of the times, you know, I was talking crazy and reckless and just being me because that's who I am. But man, and, uh, we, had, we had beautiful conversations because of that. You know? Right, right. Indeed. And, 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 you know, most of the time, I, I remember Frank saying this when Frank came back and Frank was drumming and we were uh, in, um, where's Volbeat from? Denmark. We were in Denmark at the Allberg Festival. And some crazy stuff went down. It was wild. So I remember Frank looking at me, Frank said, hey, man. Because I don't think Frank wanted to work with me at all at first. He was really? just like, yeah, he was about Bones, you know, and I and I get it. You know, I'm not mad with anybody. Bones is the guy. I, like, come on, man. Yeah, totally. I, 100%. Like, even when Rich asked me to be in, yeah. in, in Mojo, yeah, you know, some of that was also because of Bones. Right, right, was, right. We did that one tour where, mm -hmm. like, we had done a short Fozzie tour, and it was, they were trying to see if they could put the old thing back together. So it right. was, um, was Frank on that tour? I think Frank was on that tour. Mm -hmm. it was Frank, Sean, Rich, and Bones. Oh, and then uh -huh. I, I would come out, you know, Rich just says, hey man, you want to do some light teching for me? Right. Just on a couple of tunes that I want to put in the set. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it's not a great experience, but it like, it keeps you in Europe. I know you're super right. excited about touring and, and staying with me. Like, I love having you out because it's great energy. It was like, hundred percent. Right. Like, yeah. I can play, I can not play, but to get to spend five weeks in Europe when I've never right. done it, yeah. I hadn't done it at that point. Yeah. So, like every night, like, I'll do the setup and all that stuff, and then like, it was later in the show before I'd come out, right? And I'd be vibing with the band, vibe, vibing <laughs> with the band, vibing with the band. It'd be my turn to come out, and we throw down, and right. then it'd be my time to leave, and I would vibe with the band, and then show's over, you know, pack everything up, and like after a couple of weeks, Bones would be like. Are you fucking for real? Are you for real right now? I'm like, I thought I pissed him off or I offended him or something. Like, right. I've known I've known Bones since '92. Like, we were never super close until right, 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 right. right. I'm like, what's what's up, man? Are we good? He's like, I see you every day. Like, you're you're not just oh. guesting in the band. Like, right. you're you're here. Like, mm -hmm. I'm picking up on you the right. whole time. Yeah. And like, that's keeping me hype. And then you get out here and it's like, oh, fuck, everything just kind of explodes. So right. when they were talking later about that, like, 
Bones said to Richard, like, what the fuck, man? We do, we, we need to hire this guy. Are we hiring this guy or not? Like, him right, just, right. You know, playing a side fiddle. And yeah, yeah. Like, he's here. He should, if, if he's here, he should be here. Yeah, you know? indeed. So he, indeed. he was a big advocate for that. And I don't think it was a big stretch for for Rich, you know, because uh-huh. Rich was writing a lot of two guitar parts anyway gotcha. from yeah. everything. He'd, Helped him out. Yeah. yeah, I mean, Declaration of a Headhunter, there's a lot of dual guitar parts going on there as okay. well. And I think for a, a stretch, like in the early days of Fozzie, uh, Ryan Malum, who was playing guitar before I was in Fozzie, mm-hmm. he was taking lessons from Rich. Okay. So when he got into Fozzie, I think when they did some Mojo dates too, I think Ryan would, would I don't know if he sat in for the whole set, but mm-hmm. he would play guitar in Stuck Mojo as well. So Rich okay. already had it in his mind. But even still, like when Rich finally like formally said, "Hey man, let's try to do this." Yes, I was like, I'm "Just gonna pump the brakes for a second, because I it, it was right around the time it was clear that he and Bones were working out that time. Mm-hmm. He was definitely bringing you into the fold. You were well into the fold at that point. Yeah. It's like I had signed you guys off at, on a tour. Like I don't know if you remember that the rehearsal space. It was the uh-huh. first time. Like we we're all packing everything up, and I was just coming for the hang, say goodbye to everybody, and then I watched everybody drive off. I was like." What's some bullshit, man? Is that the one where we took the pictures? Where we took all? The, where we took the pictures? Was that the one? I don't think that was the one. Okay, well, I mean, at the rehearsal space. Maybe it was. Maybe, yeah. maybe, maybe it was. Um, but like that was weird to just watch everybody go, and then everybody came home. We all hung up out at the lake and did all that business. Right, 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 the, right. The forever never guys were over with Rennie and the whole. The yeah, whole I wasn't there then, but yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, man. It was just such a beautiful hang and like rich and i talked about it. I was like it felt weird just watching you guys leave it's like I'm just w- waving my band away and he's like <laughs> and he was like yeah to tell you that we had done enough touring at that point he's like it was kind of weird that you weren't coming with us and like right, right. when you weren't there yeah, so he's yeah. like what would you think about joining mojo i was like right i i got two thoughts of it because i like stuck mojo because rich ward's one of my favorite guitar players right how would i feel about some other guy stepping in and stunting in front of my favorite dude right i don't know how i feel about that right man. right, like, right. And, and i think when the band has been this kind of a unit for this long mm-hmm. i just i would want to be very careful about that because i know as a fan mm-hmm. that's not what i would want to see right so to, to justify my experience and my existence in this band mm-hmm. it, it needs to elevate and it doesn't need to elevate because i'm a hot shit lead guitar player right you know, it's got to bring you know more mm-hmm. more of everything and you know the more that we would play through stuff like rich was like you know i was one of the it's one of the first guys that he played with that and i had the the advantage of heard stuck mojo stuff since 92 you mm-hmm. know and rich and i have a lot of the same fav, same favorite guitar players so like right. in a lot of ways we're cut from the same cloth and i've been playing all of his stuff in fozzy so mm-hmm. i had a pretty good inside track on anytime he would tell me to learn a tune I, I had a direct route to right. It wasn't hard it. for you. Yeah, I, I won't say it was. It wasn't hard, but I had an advantage in mm-hmm. knowing pretty much what he was up to. So you know, the first few rehearsals when I come, he's like, "Let's see how you do with this stuff." And I came in, and he didn't have to correct anything. He's mm-hmm. like, "Because a lot of guys will, you know, he's a big alternate picker. Some mm-hmm. guys would come in, and they would expect it's going to be a little more aggro, so I'm going to down pick on that." But when you down pick that way, it doesn't swing the right way. And I would come in and like keep everything swinging where he could just Do he could not play and the swing right. wouldn't go away. And he was so used to everything being centered around the way he plays rhythm guitar. Gotcha. But I but I could meet him there. Mm-hmm. You know, it, I wasn't coming in as a guitar player being like, and now we're going to change some shit. I'm going to play it the way I play it. Right. No, 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 no. That's the way it's been played. You know, when you play Here That's Comes the Monster, it it's always been one dude playing Here Comes the Monster and it worked. Because Rich kind of does a thing that's a little bit more like Eddie Van Halen in that he's the one guitar player. He can jump right. around. He can do anything he wants to because right. he doesn't have to play tight to anybody. As long mm-hmm. as he and Frank were tight, right? it's, it's all good. He can miss notes. He could do whatever because he he's the Jedi master. He can do mm-hmm. all those things. You add in a clone to that. Like, I can't just stand there and be a machine and, and just do everything exactly. I got I to gotta meet him where he is. Right. If it's going to be loose, it's got to be loose the way he's loose, not the mm-hmm. way that I'm loose. It, like, we can't lose that. It's just got to be more of that stuff. And like some of the coolest responses I got from people who were real, real died in the wool fans who like they came into it knowing me from Fozzie, mm-hmm. skeptical as all hell. 
you know, because here comes this new guy in my favorite band. What is this? Right. You know, and like they all being admitted that like, man, we didn't know how well this is going to work out. We loved you and Fozzie, but we were like, this seems like a bad idea. Yeah. And they were all like, you know, it took me a minute to sell, sell me on it. But once I heard it mm -hmm. and that it wasn't just stuck mojo with a second guitar player, like, like it got funkier. Like, right. I don't know, I don't know how you guys did that, but you added another complication to the band and it just got funkier. Yeah. And that, and that's something that like, I don't, I don't know that a lot of people like later to the, the mojo game, like knowing mojo is a band around Atlanta from 92, 93, 94, when mm -hmm. I first met everybody, I went to, I don't know how many stuck mojo shows, right. like of all the local bands, I probably saw them more than anybody mm -hmm. a, because they were always playing and right. B, because they were outstanding. You know, you, Oh, they had yeah. all the energy like you went to a show if everybody was there and they always brought it so you like every every night was a master class on how to put on a freaking rock show yeah. you know so being able to not just not just be a piece of that but like brent and Dwayne, you know the, the guys from the inception Dwayne fowler that's it yeah, yeah. yeah yeah Dwayne. and brent Payne. uh <laughs> my brent, apologies yeah. for not saying the last names Mm -hmm. um, it was funkier then because Brent is he, Brent. Well, Brent's kind of like Frank in that he's one of the loudest drummers I've ever played with. Like, mm -hmm. and he just he's just going to destroy all things. But Dwayne is so funky, so funky. Like, mm -hmm. listen to the the if you can find any of the early demo stuff before mm -hmm. Snap and Next was put out by mm -hmm. by Century Media. Like, and even then, Snap and Next compared to rising snap yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, a different vibe. it's a different vibe like even yeah. pig walk after pig walk after different snap. vibe snap and next is a funky record i mean it's yeah. not red hot chili peppers it, it's not faith no more right. but i i think you hear a bit more of the genesis of like where they were coming from that even gave mm -hmm. them the idea to try that like it, it kind of had to happen that way but i love that funkier stuff because like yeah. the live energy of that stuff it's like going to see a good funk band now I right. get excited, man. I want, I want to throw shit, man. Like if a band is super funky <laughs> and everybody's just laying pocket, indeed. You know, like Goodbye, man, man. Man, bodies are moving, like people yeah. are thinking about procreation and like all of these beautiful things are happening. Like I get excited about that stuff. And I, I think that's, indeed. that's what made Stuck Mojo work. So like, I feel you, man, like that, that walking into a thing and it being like, I don't know if you're supposed to be here. And it's like, I don't know if I'm supposed to be here either, but one thing I'm not going to do is pretend like I'm not supposed to be here. I'm right, gonna, right, right, right. I, I see my seat at the table. I'm just going to take it. I'm not sorry. What, no, I, no, no, <laughs> listen, 100%, you know, bones it out. You know, we had conversations, but it's all love, though, because that's my dude. Yeah, yeah. When, when, when Frank said that, because Rich and I had the conversation, when Frank said that, I was just like, it's all love. You know, it was no no worries. And then Frank, once again, at that Allberg All Metal Festival, Frank came up to me. He just said, hey, man, I want to let you know I appreciate you, and, and I see it. You know, I, I see it. And, and I was just like, Frank, you know, I'm chill. I sit there and just like, yo, I'm the greatest individual in the world. Now, I'm not saying that to everybody <laughs> out there. I'm just saying that to us because yeah. we're all bonding together, and I'm having a good time just being me because I want to laugh and clown and do all those things. And uh, that's when I, I believe Frank and I, we really got a closer bond, you know? So it wasn't like I was just that outsider dude, but, but what we did was different. It wasn't the same kind of stuck mojo. And I know that people were just like, man, you know, at first, cause I can remember being in Chicago with LSU and I can remember some people coming up to like, Hey man, you know, before the show, you know, like, Hey man, you know, we love bones. And I said, Hey man, I love Bones too. That's my guy. What are you talking about? And then after the show, they were just like, hey, we apologize. That was a great show. We yeah. just love Bones. And I said, I don't have a problem with that. I said, I want you guys to understand something. None of that is affecting me. I'm just going to come out here and be Lord Nelson and yeah. do what I do and let the chips fall where they may. Now, if you love me and like me, it's fine. You know, I'll take, I'll, like I said, I'll take the 10 million that love me against the 1 million that don't. It doesn't, yeah. it doesn't bother me. I'm good with me because I know who I am and mm -hmm. I love me. But I know one thing that the Stunk Mojo fans are some of the greatest fans in the world. They are beautiful people, beautiful yeah. people. And I've met so many of them and I thank music for it. I, I, I really do. It, it really is a thing like 
Stuck Mojo fans are actual fans. You know, right. we, we throw around a lot of vernacular mm -hmm. all the time. You know, fan is short for fanatic. You mm -hmm. know, when, and when you think about Beatlemania and people losing their minds, right. losing their minds about Elvis, losing their mm -hmm. minds about Michael Jackson, like girls can't breathe. They've fallen out because Michael Jackson is 100 feet that way. Oh, right, right, right. <laughs> you know, and they're falling out. Like it, th th there's a fanatic level of mm -hmm. just enthusiasm for an artist and stuck Mojo fans like, man, when they embrace you, man, it's, it's real. Thank it's so real. Much, man. Because yeah, because yeah. those same dudes who are like, man, I love Bones. Those are the same guys. If there was an opening band for Stuck Mojo, mm -hmm. they would get their spot at the front of the stage. If that was the stage, they'd do this. <laughs> It, it, I'm, I'm not even going to acknowledge you sad, right. pathetic motherfuckers. Back right, there. right, right. You know, making some noise. It's got nothing to do with me. I'm going to hang out here. My friend's going to bring me a beer. <laughs> and it's cool. Y'all done? Right. Now it's Indeed. time for the show. Indeed. Man, you know that's how Mojo fans are. Right. And like, it, on the one hand, you're like, that is crazy. I've never been such a big fan of a band. But mm -hmm. I felt like it's my job to disrespect the band that comes out before. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, listen. So, so, so listen to this. When I first saw Bones, I hadn't seen him. So, a friend of the story went like this: A friend of ours, we were at a Fishbone, De La Soul, Goody Mob concert in Columbia. So, I saw one of our old classmates that we graduated with, Reggie. I, Reggie was like, "Hey, man, what's up? What, what you doing here?" So, we're enjoying the show. Fishbones on, they're wilding out, doing their thing. It was a great, great show. And so he was like, "Hey, man." He said, Bones is going to be, I said, Bones, he said, Darren. I said, man, I said, man, I haven't seen him in, man, I can't even, I don't even remember since high school probably. So I'm like, man, what are you talking about? He said, yeah, they'll be here at this time at a place called Rockefeller's here. And I was just like, I'm there. And so, boom, I could not wait. Here I am, you know, my Tommy Hilf Hilfiger khakis and, and, you know, my, you know, I dress like I dress. You know what I'm saying? I'm a preppy guy, so I'm coming down there. And that's how Bones, hey, Bones knows back in school, he was super preppy also. Polo short wearing, I mean, that's what we did. So anyway. Hey, man, he still got his flex, you know? Yeah, yeah, I, I was more on my break dancing, rapping thing like that. But he was, you know, the band man, the trumpet dude, played basketball. Bones was the guy, I know he was having his business. You know, I used to clown them all now. I clowned them all. I mean, I really clowned them all. <laughs> <laughs> but the thing was, is that, um, so I'm coming down, and I'm expecting to see that same guy from high school. And as I'm walking down, I was like, who is that? Is that, I'm seeing the, the, the you know, the dreads and they turned up like in a, like devil hole. I'm just like, he turned around, he saw me, he screamed my name so loud and ran up and we just hugged each other. And I just looked at him like, who in the hell are you, man? The tattoos and everything, I was just like, you're a different dude. And so we just chopped it up and just talked. And I saw the fans come up to him and I, and now I'm amazed. I'm sitting there and I'm, I'm seeing stardom right there with somebody I really know. And so I'm just like, wow. So he's just like, nah, come on in, we're gonna do. So they went up, so they're gonna do their thing. So I meet Rich and I, I meet everybody. So, you know, Corey, I'm laughing with him about, you know, who he used to date back in the day the Dorito lady or whatever like that. I'm laughing because I think it's an awesome thing. I was like, the Super Bowl commercial Dorito? I was like, my man, no disrespect to what he's got going on now. I love Corey. Corey's a great guy. So um, so they're going up. So Bones is like, hey, man, we about to uh, go on. So he's like, I got to go get dressed. So I was like, okay, okay, cool. So I'm like, man, I go all the way up to the front of the stage. The front of the stage. And so, you know, things are about to start. And so I'm the only one there. My, and I just looked around like, what's wrong with these people, man? So they were all back. Man, when they came out and that first lit, <clears throat> they went bananas. I was in a mosh pit so massive and crazy. Not that it was a big club, but there were so many people in there because it was packed out. They started knocking me everywhere, man, but it was like the greatest feeling, man. And I'm just up there into it like beyond, beyond. And so after that show, man, I'm just chopping it up with them. And I'm just looking at them. And Bones is like, 
man, I thought you were going to be a comedian somewhere, man, clowning people somewhere. I'm like, nah, man, I'm just chilling. He's just like, I just knew you was going to be that kind of guy. I'm like, nah, man. So I said, nah, I write and I do whatever. I said, if you guys ever need whatever, let me know. A few years down the way, he let me know. And so that's why I say, man, I just, I just give, I give thanks to him um, for, for looking out for me. And I love him, man. And, and, you know, we still, you know, I mean, we still, we stay in touch, man. So when people say things, I just want them to know, man, that that's my guy. Yeah. Bones is my dude, man. And from the Bones Project to uh, 420 Monks, you best believe I was at all those shows. Yeah, man. I went to all those shows and I enjoyed it, man. But anyway, man. Yeah, he's a big brother, man, for sure. I yeah. uh, Last time I saw him, I was I was up in Wisconsin. Oh, really? Okay. With, uh, with Dixie Duncan. Mm-hmm. And we took a we took a day trip to go hang out and have dinner and yeah just commiserate for a good minute man it, right. it had been it had been a minute because he'd been out of town for a minute mm-hmm. that's the last time we really get to like in person sit up and hang man right he's right, just, right right he's a big brother man I'm, yeah man he's cool I'm, man I, I, I and so listen forever. um Jay any other questions wow he didn't cover everything I was talking about and you yeah you been sitting over there just I'm listening I mean I know it's like it's us yeah, because yeah, listen yeah, we can continue brother. to talk. Yeah. And hold on, I'm gonna say two more things. Listen, I, I can continue it on. Things just keep popping in my head. So let me ask you this. First, I want to say this. <laughs> no, we're cool with that. I'm That's climbing, crazy. I'm climbing, I'm climbing. First of all, I want to thank you for one thing, and it's a Walmart uh product. Indulgent trail mix. Man, yeah. ever since I had that on tour, I listen, they know. I love that trail mix so much. It is the greatest thing ever. Man, it's got to stay away from it sometimes, but that indulgent yeah. trail mix, I'm just like, first of all, because I would never eat stuff like that ever. Then I was like, oh, let me try some of this. And then I was like, holy catastrophe. This is unbelievable. Okay, now that's that tour bus stuff, watching crazy movies. Anyway, now, how'd you feel about Russia? And then we'll end it. How was Russia to you? You know, it was amazing. What a what a weird experience, though. <laughs> it's amazing. Like, like everything leading up to it. Like, I think no matter what, just having that excitement that, oh man, we going to Russia. Okay. <laughs> going to Russia. Like, there's there's a part of your brain that's like, I go places. Right. Russia is a place. Right. Of course I'm going to Russia. Right. It's total sense. You know, but it was so weird. Like, it's one of my favorite tour stories to tell people about going to play Moscow because people are like, oh man, that's great. You played Russia. I'm like, but wait, I didn't <laughs> just play Russia. Like, we did it in a very not sophisticated kind of way. Right. <laughs> it's, indeed. it's such a hilarious story. Like it's, yes. it's one of my favorite toad stories. Yes, sir. You know, to sit in the consulate's room and watch him with a straight face tell not a band. No, 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 no. No, no, no. It's my bachelor party. <laughs> bachelor you... party. That's what, what we had to say, Jay, that's what we had to say. We were going what? to a bachelor party. Or they were trying to charge us all kinds of money to go play in Russia. Yeah. So why? Toad had to stay. I'm sorry, go ahead and finish telling the story. Yeah, why? I remember him asking why, because he could tell we were a band. Like, well, mm-hmm. clearly we're on tour. Like, well, at the end of this tour, right? These are all my mates. We're gonna go have my bachelor right. party. Yeah, you know, in Moscow. Right. <laughs> and the, the look on the consulate's face, like you're all professional musicians around there. Like, yeah, but we're all like best friends. Yeah, yeah totally get right. married. And he totally <laughs> was getting married. Right. Right. Indeed. <laughs> So, 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 Green, but, check but, this out. But, but, but why, but he literally asked, so, but why would you go to Russia? Because I heard the whores there are the best. <laughs> and like, we're just sitting there like, that's not what I would have come up with. We had to all like, give our passports. Yeah. Like too. It, and and the thing is, is that it was early in the morning and it was cold. I'm the only person of color there, of course. It, so we're on the bus and so we start walking down. And so there's all these people lined up to get in this consulate to, so, you know, to get approved to do whatever they need to do. So the guy, I see him, he looks like this and he sees me. I'm the tallest and the biggest out there. He points at me. He says, come on. And I said, let's go guys. <laughs> we going to the front of the line. <laughs> and we got up in there and then told me he rest in peace. One of the great human beings of the world, 
he, he went in there and they we sat there and then they were like he was like I've got to stay. So we went to our last show and I think it was in Austria. Uh, was it because it was with Ectomore? We was on tour with Ectomore. So uh, that yes. last tour, that last that last show, I think it was in Austria. And um, it, it, it was, was in Germany. Show. Remember, we like we stayed there at the beginning of the tour when we got to Germany. We stayed in right. this one little hotel. Yeah. And it was the roundabout, and there was that weird grocery store. I can't remember if it was an Aldi or something, but one hundred percent. There was some really stinky cheese. I remember getting. Oh, it wasn't the stinky cheese, Miguel. I it mean, was, it was the a, one stinky guy. There, at the front was, desk, who <laughs> had the same shirt on when we came back the next time. It's like, I was like, that man didn't wash not one time since we've been gone for a year. But like, <laughs> he had the same shirt on. But like, Ooh, we were there. He's still and then we came back to there and mm -hmm. left all of our stuff so we could go to Russia because we couldn't take our instruments. So, like, we're hotels instruments. there and then we're going to Russia and then we come back there. So, like, this really Frankfurt. surreal. Frankfurt. Fra was it in Frankfurt? Frankfurt. Mm -hmm. I have very weird memories of Frankfurt because we spent a fair little amount of time there, what little time we did spend there, right. but it was psychedelic for some reason. And like, it's not like we drank or did anything. Right. Like we did nothing weird. Nothing weird. Maybe a glass of wine, I, I, if, if that much, <laughs> it, but it was just kind of surreal in some weird way. Yeah. And maybe it was this whole Russia experience that- Russia that experience was, is something else. It was just preparing us, us like, for that. They treated us like superstars. So weird. Like super, Prim, when I tell you like superstar, everything. You know, once again, I tried to tell you that uh, my man, I tried to get that leather coat from him. He had that leather coat with fur on it. As I was telling, we were talking in another podcast. I asked him probably 50 times. Man, I still got that like, hat. Lord, of course the hat, which he, look, he used to, he used to, he used to take my hat, put my hat on and everything. But uh, I asked that guy that 50 times. He said, Lord, I would give it to you but my wife would kill me. He was like, she bought this for me. And it was, he was a big guy. I don't know if you remember him with the beard. Yes. Uh, yes, 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 yes. Because he, so, he took us to Red Square. He, he was kind of right, our, our right, handler. Right, yeah. Red Square. Anyway, Russia, Russia was so beautiful. And so it was just like being here. And it was that, that was the amazing thing about it. Everything was like, I was like, they're here. And well, I certain stuff I can't really talk about, but it, we we had a wonderful time, and so the meal was great. Uh, the, the first meal when we first got there, and we were all eating and stuff, and we were like, "Yeah, man, this is awesome! Man, this is the best meal ever!" And then they were like, "No, that was just the the um, first preliminary. Course. Now we're going to have the meal," and we were like, "Man, we oh. were full." Jay, we ate so much of other stuff, and then they brought out, "Do you want to have?" Uh, salmon or steak and they had the uh the caviar the salmon egg caviar in the butter or whatever that you put over and i was like i'm not eating none of that mike was like no you've got to have it and i was like man you he was like yes this is so good so i was like let me try it wow yeah next level yeah. beautiful they took such good care of us it was a uh, amazing it was amazing and then do you remember the meal at the uh before the show i do because I, I actually tried borscht so I, I do like beets and i was so disappointed that i didn't like it you didn't like the so okay so so you hear what he said yeah. he didn't like the borscht i loved it yeah. i didn't know i was like i'll never eat beets my mom used to have beets back in the days and i'm like i'm never eating that well let me ask you this coleslaw are you a coleslaw guy? No, I don't eat coleslaw. I don't like coleslaw either. And the way that borscht was prepared, it was more like a sweet coleslaw. Really? Beets. To I, me, I, right. I couldn't, I, as soon as I got that in my mind, I was like, I can't do it. I can't do so, it. So see, you, do you, like you, probably, you probably don't remember this. So this is what happened. I ate mine. I said, Mike, you're not going to eat that? I'll take it. <laughs> LSU, you're not going to eat that? I'll take it. It was that good to me. And I'm real picky about stuff like that. But that was, I said, just let me try it. Amazing. Yeah. Amazing. Russia was Russia was definitely on another level. Something I'll never forget. I'll never forget that first tour. I had so much fun, fun with my brother's vengeance. They're still my brothers to this day. They, they, they are, listen, they are some of the greatest guys ever. I love yeah. each and every one of those dudes. And uh, we had such a ball. And of course, the Vendetta dudes, so cool. 
we had such a ball with them. They're, they're my dudes also. I miss yeah, those guys, man. Wes and the boys. Like, I oh, mean, Wes and Gav, man. They're great guys. I have so many, you know, that's really a, a big blessing of getting to do this for a living too, is not just the people that you meet along the way, but like everybody in, in, in the circuit and all of the other bands end up becoming a part of your, your wider family too, right, right. you know, cause Indeed. you are working together. You, you may not be playing in the same set, but right. like when, when you're loading into the same venue day in and day out, you know, mm-hmm. like it matters. Like you want the opening band to have a good night, you know, cause that if they're is. having a good night means more likely you're going to have a good night too. But if they're having trouble, Oh hell, you know, that could, if, especially if it's sound trouble or something like right. we right. don't need any of that trouble. Right. You know, Cause you wanted I, to I be- can't think of where we had any really bad, bad times, man. I, I, I just think that everything was good. So listen, we, we are, we, we, I'm about to wrap up, but here's the thing I keep going on. I want to go back and talk about um, the Volby. So Jan, last thing I, I promise. Jan was like after that last show in um, Osnabrück, because all the shows were sort of rich ass Daniel every night. Uh, you know, what's the, what's the take on it? Uh, sold out. Oh, show sold out. Sold out. And then Rich was like, yeah, Stuck Mojo sell it out every show. <laughs> <laughs> but the thing was, is that Jan told me at, at that last show, and we had that picture where we were all hugged up and everything. We took the picture all together. Jan pulled me aside. He said, hey, man, I want to let you know something. He said, you guys made us work so hard every night. He said, every single night we had to play harder because of what you guys did you guys put the the crowd into a frenzy so by the third song so a lot of these people were really volbeat fans they're volbeat fans and stuck mojo fans would be in the crowd now no doubt yeah, you see little volbeat pocket, fans. little pocket over here yeah volbeat fans everywhere and all these shows sold out now man by that third song that we were doing we had them we had them and they were just like oh my gosh these guys are on another level. And that's why I say I've had so many people say that the vibe that we had was so magical. They were just like, man, I love that. And even when people were like, well, I like this, you know, I, I always kind of like, I shy away from stuff like that. I mean, I, I, accolades are cool. I, I, it's all love. But I, I know the, the humbleness of me when it comes to yeah. the masses. I'm more humble. When it's just us talking noise, I'm just like, I'm the greatest individual they ever to be in the world, you know. But uh, and I'm confident in who I am, and just like I know you are. And um, but just great. So anyway, Miguel, thank you so much. I don't know how we gonna cut how long this is. I don't know. We might make it two parts. We right. still gotta have you on again to talk about more stuff. So much. Thank stuff. you, thank you, thank you very, very much. You're so appreciative. Um you were saying something, Jay? I'm sorry. It's good to hear y'all talk about your experiences. I just hope I'll, I'll be able to get to it soon. Is it whatever y'all experience? Is. Absolutely, but you know, I, I'm a big believer in you know, if you don't, if you don't speak it into existence, nobody mm-hmm. else is going to do it. So, you know, there's not really anything else to do in this life but go after the good mm-hmm. stuff. It's real tough. Yeah, is, is this the most? You know, is it the most important thing in the world? No, of course it's not the most important thing in the world, mm-hmm. especially. You know, it's not about being famous. It's not a, certainly not about being rich. Um, it, it does, you know, for some stuff. And you know, we didn't we didn't talk about other topics. We'll talk about maybe on the next time. <laughs> but uh, you know, you can have an unhealthy pursuit of things in the entertainment industry. You know, that to to make up for shortfalls in in whatever you feel like you're lacking in your life, if you you know, felt like you didn't get enough attention as a child or, or whatever, you know, you weren't special in some kind of way. It's like, well, here's a place I can shine. I can go do this. And like, it's, it is fulfilling in a particular way. You know, I know for me being an awkward kid, you know, it definitely, it, this is the place where I came into my own where like, there's no question, you know, everything else in my life as a little kid, it's like, you can make fun of me and it would destroy me. Cause like, I didn't know who I was, right. you know, like, and I tried not to have the fragilest of egos, you know, still go out and play football with my friends and let the, you know, we'd rag on each other. You just learn to give as well as you get, you know, but right, take it, indeed. take it humbly, give it humbly, you know, cause you don't indeed. really want to hurt somebody's feelings. You just, right. you just, you know, whatever, man, you just throwing jabs at your boys. It's, it's a thing. Yeah. <laughs> but as you get older and you're like, you realize, no, this is my thing. And I'm serious as a heart attack about this. Yeah. You know, you could take it too seriously as well. If like, it becomes everything about, you know, yeah. your existence you know 
what makes what makes your art more interesting is being a real person. And now you're just exhibiting the art of a real person. And that's something that people will resonate with, they'll relate to, you know, because whatever it is in our art, when we share, like, we talk about our favorite bands or anything, we can talk about our favorite records, like, you know, there's a reason I'll show my favorite records to my friends. It's because there's something about that record that if I show it to my friends, the, you know, my peers, the people I love and respect so much, is I'm showing them something about me. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter if it's not their favorite record, but if if there's any particular record I could show you and be like, man, something about this record just really sets me off. Even if it's not for you, you learn something about me and it does bring us closer in a particular way. And we do this with our favorite art artists, you know, whether they're graphic artists or painters or poets, writers, movie makers, any of that stuff, musicians, you know, it, it definitely, we identify with these things because it does help us express things about ourselves. And that's a beautiful thing about being an artist is trying to find the things inside of ourselves that we can express. And it's, it's a life lived. It's those experiences that we have to write about, mm -hmm. you know, and that, you know, a performance of said artwork, you know, you can pantomime a lot of stuff and that's a performance of a type as well. But like when you're doing your stuff and it's real mm -hmm. and it comes from a real place, you know, you never fail. It's it, it literally pointing back at, at a young, naive prince of like, of course I'm doing this. Like, I say it all the time. Like it, it, it's, a, it's a crazy thing. Like I can't imagine not doing this because like it's just, it's me. You know, that, that sort of, that self-awareness of I've already succeeded, you know, and I will always succeed as long as I hold on to that little kernel of that that thing that 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 light that is me not right. the superstar because like that's a funny thing and it, lord you know about this too is like all of a sudden like you know your story mm -hmm. i know my story and right. we know our stories collectively because we're all hanging out and sharing these things but then there's an internet mm -hmm. and you in this band and you right. in this magazine and there are people who want to know about your story right and people will come up and tell you things about your life. And you're like, <laughs> that is so much cooler than anything that ever happened. And actually, right, it did, it did. you know, it's like th this mythology grows up around you. And like, I'm not a mystical, weird thing. Like, I feel like I'm a pretty obvious person. Like I'll talk mm -hmm. to anybody. I, I have never met a stranger, you know, like I I'm willing to, to talk about pretty esoteric things, like straight up front. Like I don't right. need to hide my Christianity or my faith or any of that business. Like I'm, pretty much me. And like, I, as a matter of fact, I probably want to lead with that more, mm -hmm. you know, because that's, that's a better marker for the person that I am, right. not for me to hide behind. But, you know, of all of this stuff, it better serve that, you mm -hmm. know. And when people are telling you things about your life, and you're like, it's really weird that people I have no idea who they are take an interest in me. And like, you kind of expect some things, right? Like, guitar player, I expect somebody's going to come up and talk to me about a guitar. Like, that thing, you do this lick on this thing. I saw you mm. do this thing. There's a YouTube video. Let me show you. Pull it up. This thing, what are you doing? Like that thing. Or I figured out that lick that you did on this thing. Like, that's the kind of thing I'm expecting that like right. maybe some youngster is going to take a shine to something I do and they're going <laughs> to obsess about a record. The way that I obsessed about records has been like, to me, that would be a, a pretty high mark of praise because, you know, we get some pretty deep and nerdy about stuff on records, you know, the, right. I got to know what that is. And to be on somebody's radar in that kind of way would just be like crazy. And while I got people who've come up with say very nice things about my guitar playing, and that's wonderful too. Like I haven't, I've only met a couple of people who've gone deep on a few things and it's still kind of weird that people like, I think well of my playing, but not like, not worthy of that kind of study. Their, pers just, their, their perspective of it. Yeah. yeah, I can't worry about that stuff. I can't write in a way of like, people are going to study this one. Like, I can't do that. I just, I got to be me and do, you do what thing. you do. You're doing you. Yeah. And that's it. Somebody else will figure that history is for everybody else. I'm just <laughs> busy trying to do this right now. And this is hard enough. But like the life stuff, like, the, like I remember as a good friend of mine, he and his wife, they were in, just a couple at the time, just, to, I don't even know if they were engaged when I went to Australia, like Eads, he would write to me on the forum and like, we would write and write and write and write and write and write. And like, 
I didn't know this dude. This was pre Facebook. Mm -hmm. This was this was pre Instagram. I mean, MySpace was happening, but like yeah. we didn't share that many pictures, right? Gotcha. Like it was more about the weird gifts and right, 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 right. Shit that everybody was doing. So like, I don't know what anybody looks like. And I met him on Rich, you know, I don't know if Rich still has it, but he had a very active forum on his actual website that right. people would talk on every day. So mm -hmm. like that was a part of my day. It's like I go in and like, what's new in the forum? What are people talking about? favorite bands, favorite records, blah, 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 blah. It's just a good way to ingratiate yourself with people that have been following, you know, these brands that I was working with. So I got to know Eads over there. And then when I get to Australia, this big dude, I mean, wall of a person, like he's, he was not small. He was a whole person and more. He was, he, he's substantial. He's a wall of a person. He's a wall of man. He's like, <laughs> what do you think of an Australian man? Yeah. That's not a man. That's a man. Like that, that's a he, sandwich. He, 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 he had seconds. I'm telling you, big, big dude. Like he walks up to a meet and greet mm -hmm. and I forget if it like we were doing meet and greets at record stores the days before shows because we only did like four or five shows in Australia. Okay. So like we had time to like see the city before we do the show the next night mm -hmm. and we're doing an in-store signing and Ease comes up and he just starts talking to me about stuff. And at first I'm like, who is this? Is this guy a serial killer? Like what's going on? Like he's telling us like, your wife told me to tell you hello. And like all of these things, I'm like, how, how does anybody know my wife? Like, now, did I mention my wife? Like what is going on? Like, this is, this is weird. When a absolute stranger just walks up, I was like, it's the one and only time I have been really just gobsmacked talking to somebody because I was not expecting that. Right, right. That was still early on with my Fosse 10 year old like mm -hmm. That was like the first record store signings that I okay. really did with Fosse. Right. Because I, I joined in 2004. That was late summer 2005. So I hadn't even mm -hmm. been in the band really a year. I've right. just been in a music video and a few mm -hmm. little tours. So I was like, what is happening? What What is happening? Like, I'm on the other side of the planet and people know about things that I don't know that they should know about. Right. We, we still friends like I, we, we chop it up on Facebook all the time. Yeah. Like he and his yeah. wife are the loveliest of people. Yeah. And like, he had just been a lovely guy. You've probably talked to him online too. I know mm -hmm. we didn't get to make it to Australia. Right. But uh. Like, he's just one of those people. And his wife is just Belle. She's just a wonderful lady too. Mm -hmm. like crazy. Just crazy that like, you you know what about what, you know like <laughs> when you when you hear stuff and it's like there's a mythology and you're like it sounds way more interesting than anything that's going on in my life and then there's like somebody who's like specifically talking to you about stuff and you're like, but that's that's real that's 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 really real and people know mm -hmm. stuff about me you don't right. expect like you have to have a pretty healthy ego to be a performer especially mm -hmm. if you're going to do any sort of entertaining on a level of. I want to be in magazines and on television and, right. and do all the press and do all that stuff. Like you, you need, you need a healthy enough ego just to help you with your boundaries. Mm -hmm. You know, you kind of need that. But if, if they're really healthy boundaries, like you're not going to expect that everybody's going to love me and everybody's going to know all kinds of things about exactly. me. Right. You just like, I was not prepared for that whatsoever. I right. thought it was about, my experience mm -hmm. with how I looked at musicians that I looked right. up to. And I, and I right. remember like the first time I met a rock star, we're going long on stuff again. You can cut this story. So look. I was in seventh grade and I was going back to school shopping in New Hampshire. So mm -hmm. me, me and my friend, Bob, we got our, we're on our bikes and we rode into town on our bikes. This is back in the day when, you know, you could do that sort of thing. Like I'm going right. to go back to school shopping. I'm just going to ride into town on my bike. Like, right. We don't let our kids do that shit now, yes, but like, my parents absolutely let me do that. So we went to Kmart and we we're picking up trapper keepers and you know, the things that you get in the eighties when you're in seventh grade. And like, we've got hands full of just like the cheapest stuff that we could afford for school right. that we think we need. And in walks, um, it was Frankie Benali from Quiet Riot and-, and Really? The guitar player was he was new it was Greg Jafria. He had mm -hmm. just he had just joined the band. Um, trying to remember who was playing bass. 
I want to say it was Rudy Sarzo, but I don't think it was. I don't think it was Rudy Sarzo. I'm pretty sure he was definitely not in the band at that point. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's no way he would have, he would have been a White Snake at the time. So I, I forget who was playing bass with Quiet Riot, but I knew who Frankie Benali was because he's right. very obviously the guy from the Quiet Riot videos. So like they were super cool, signed to Trapper Keepers before we even paid for them and all this stuff. Like, and I didn't want to bother them. Like it's mm-hmm. literally like. Don't expect to run into those kinds of people at Kmart, but I guess you right. need a thing too. It's right. not a whole lot to do in concrete. Just human beings, man. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, just trying to I'm live in their best life at Kmart and <laughs> Concord, New Hampshire. Blue Light Special, man. <laughs> man. <laughs> like, I remember that. And then I remember going to dinner with my parents later that night. And Kevin Dubrow and the rest of the band showed up for dinner at the same really? restaurant. Yeah. This restaurant was a nice restaurant. Mm-hmm. This is one of those places we go and it's a treat. Like, right, gotcha. Mom and dad had a little extra scratch. Mm-hmm. We go into the weather vane and we're going to one of these nice restaurants in downtown Concord. We, we put on a good shirt, kids. We're doing this. <laughs> so we get there, and in, I mean, in a giant wig and a like a, a ort cloud of cologne, like I have never experienced in my life, Kevin Dubro and the band walks in. Kevin Dubro is another thing, man. God rest him. But he's another thing. I've never <laughs> met him since then. But I all day I've been rubbing into my brother's nose, like, man, I got to meet some rock stars today. Right, like, right. You get to do the coolest stuff. I was like, man, you gotta go back to school shopping. You just you yeah. you were you were too cool to hang out with your little brother. That's now right. look at you. Now look at you. <laughs> Let me wipe them tears for you, man. Let me get them. Let me get them. And like I would never walk up to somebody at a restaurant. Like mm-hmm. Even though I'd already met the guys, like they were the nicest people, you know, like they're just trying to have dinner. My brother's like, I really just want to go over there and say hello and maybe get an autograph. Like, it'd probably be cool. My little sister's there too. She's like, it would be cool to do that. I don't, I don't know that she really processed the whole thing, but she's like, it would right. be cool. And my mom is trying to figure out well, how do we how do we deal with this situation? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I don't like this band anyway. Right. <laughs> and I have one young kid who now is a rock star because he met a rock star. And right. I have the, the, his two siblings who now would very much like to be his equal by right. getting an autograph. So she's like, if you can very calmly go over there and politely ask for an autograph, okay, but you do not bother them. They're, mm-hmm. they're having dinner. Do not bother them while having dinner. And Kevin Dubrow, you, you just, this was one of the first lessons in like, maybe I don't want to meet everybody. Cause I had a really good experience earlier in the day, but Kevin wasn't there. And I don't know what kind of a day he was having because mm-hmm. you can't have a bad day on the road as I know now, mm-hmm. but it's also why I was super on point about like, I'm not going to be that guy who lets a bad mood ruin a day mm-hmm. or a bad situation ruin a day on the road. Right. Cause like anybody you come in contact with, this may be the one opportunity they get to shake your hand or say hello or just whatever. And it may not even be, they need to talk to you because they're a fan. They may mm-hmm. just need to talk to you because could you move your fucking amp, please? Right. <laughs> you know, right. and you don't want to be that guy who's just like, no, I'm not moving my fucking amp, please. You know, <laughs> maybe it's just cooler to just be like, oh, yeah, man, terribly sorry I'm in your way, man. Just to be accommodating because you hear people talk about, man, I was on the road. Yes. With man, those guys were jerks. Yes. They would not accommodate. They wouldn't right. like and you hear these stories about other bands. I remember Kevin Dubrow not really wanting to talk to kids. Mm-hmm. Not even just not talk to fans, but we were kids. Mm-hmm. Not wanting to talk to kids at dinner. He had the wig on. He had the cologne. It's a night off the of concert. He's, pro- he's probably wanted to meeting some young talent, but not <laughs> young talent. <laughs> you know, you know what I'm saying. So I know what you're saying. <laughs> so he, you know, he was a bit dismissive. You know, I, I didn't walk up to the table. My brother and my sister did, but Frankie Benali, to his credit, and. I never got to meet him beyond this day, but I, the good fortune of being in this industry is I now have worked with a lot of people who did get to work and know Frankie personally. And I know he, he recently passed from cancer. Mm-hmm. I've heard nothing but the most beautiful stories about the dude of him just being a, just a wonderful human being, being very gracious to all walks, you know, whether you're professionally working with him or a fan, like mm-hmm. he, he made the time to acknowledge you as, as a real human being. And uh, that was my experience. And when Kevin tried to be like, I'm not signing your thing, Frankie was like, no, 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 man. Come I on. got you. Come on over here. Like, I remember peeking around the booth and he saw me. He's like, oh, hey, Kmart, right? Like, 
He remembered me too. So it's like, well, now I got to sign these things for these kids because young mm -hmm. sir has probably been bragging. You know? So he made the whole thing right. But Kevin was definitely not feeling it that day. I, I, I tell you, uh, Relentless Relentless said that he and Hell B would always say that. And I, and, and I really do live by that. And I use that a lot. Now he said, man, all you want is people to be just good human beings. And that's difficult for a lot of people just to be a good human being, man. And I, I believe that I'm a, a good human being. And I just yeah. know when I look at people, I don't really let people get under my skin, even though my saying is, the world is not crazy, it's the people in it. And I really believe that. You know, the world has been doing what it's been doing forever. It's the people that do devilish things, crazy things to each other, whatever like that. And I just try to, I do my best to stay away from madness. I yeah. really do. I don't I don't have time for all that madness. I just want love. It's all love to me. I mean that. It's all love. And if you not speaking on love, then go over that way. Miss me with that. Go over that way. And yeah. I'll still laugh at you. You know, <laughs> you can talk about me all you want to. I, I really don't care. You know, if you talk, fine. That's how you feel. That's, that's love. But I just want to do me and I just want to be a happy person. And that's why I try to, you know, uh, express to my children and my family that this is who I am. And that's just legitimately who I am. You know, I'm not putting on any, any facade or whatever like that. I, this is who I am. And so, um, Mike, once again, thank you so much. Thank Would you, you please give all your information to these, these, these people that, that are going to show love stuck Mojo fans. We love you guys, man. Yes. My social security number is. <laughs> right now. Right that down. I, 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 don't let them get to the millions, man. Come man. on, man. Man, if you ever want to be declined for something <laughs> fast, yeah. let me tell you, it's impressive. Um, <laughs> you see that, Free, you see the guitars back there, right? Yeah, yeah. Like, like, you, you see the guitars back there. You see the Marshall amps back there. Uh, uh, oh, yeah, don't let, uh, listen, don't let the smooth taste fool you, man. That's Miguel, it, man. It's good, but I mean, it took a minute to, to, hey, it's to all acquire this stuff. You know, but you all had, of that listen, stuff. The first one with the really. iPhone. The first one with the iPhone. He had the iPhone on tour. The first one, the first iPhone. That was me. He had it. We had all kinds of, of craziness. He had that iPhone though. Yeah, I remember as soon as we got to Red Square and I started taking pictures, and all those young kids started coming. I was like, I can't. I, I nope, nope. That's an Apple phone. Nope, nope. No, it is not. No, it is not. What that is is a mistake. I'm sorry. <laughs> I, I kept it going on. Give a please. Give your information, sir. All right, my my information. I have a brand new website that is horribly vacant. Um, the music industry, as everybody knows, things have been changing. Mm -hmm. So like, I'm just trying to figure out a new way to navigate some things in the music mm -hmm. industry. And a web presence is a big piece of that. Um, right. And a lot of people have been surviving, you know, off of the things that they've been doing online, whether it's, you know, you know, a Zoom interviews and stuff that they could put up on YouTube or, or whatever. Right. So I have all that stuff in my website is a place I'm trying to aggregate all that stuff. I'm so behind on that stuff. I don't even know that I have all the links there. Mm -hmm. But my web domain is the same as all of my socials, mike205martin.com. Mm -hmm. So right, if Martin. you're looking for, you, for me on YouTube, it's youtube.com slash mike205martin. Instagram is at mike205martin. Facebook, all, all the same. We're trying to, trying to get all that stuff linked up a little bit better. Gotcha. Um, I think streamlining the market, the thing that's weird is it's, you know, M-I-K-E, the number two, O-F, the number five M A R T I N. Right, right, so right. if you get that, you, you're pretty straight on all of that stuff. And, right, and I'm, love, uh, love. Jay, Jay, anything you want to say, man? What's up? Talk to me. I appreciate you coming on, man. I, like I said, y'all just said a lot of things that I wish I could experience too. So we'll get to it. And I appreciate yeah, you. Yeah, man. Today. You, you got will, to experience. You will, like, you will. You, so, you ladies and gentlemen, once again, this is the Going In Podcast with your truly Lord Nelson and Jay Parker. And our very special guest, Mr. Mike Martin. So, thank you very much, man. We appreciate your time. Man, yeah, thank you good. guys so much. I love, love both love, of you love. so much. Love to the whole family. You know, I, I keep man, man, yeah, 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 man, right here, sure. my thoughts and prayers all the time. Yeah, so. yeah, indeed, man. Same thing, man. Make, listen, make sure you tell Kim, man. I love him so much, man. Just tell him, man, much love, man. You Absolutely. know, I still see her. You see her out there so often, you know, every so often uh, uh, out there, man. But uh, she's, a, she's a great person, great woman, man. Love. And your Absolutely. daughter, too, tell her love, love to her, man. And I pray. And hopefully soon we can get in the same proximity. We can break some actual bread together. 
Yeah, yeah, indeed, man. Yeah. We, we definitely need to get back together. Hey, listen, I told Sean, listen, Sean, Rich, um, I got to talk to Ellis. You haven't asked him. I probably want to get Big Steve on, uh, you know, but I talked to Mike, uh, Michael Polson, and uh, he hit me back and he said, but, you know, when they're that big, they got to check with yeah, public yeah. relations and, and those kind of things. The Nashville Pussy uh, writer and uh, Blaine, you know, I, I talked to him on the phone. So it's just like, hey, but, you know, once again, they've got to check all their stuff. Yeah. But once again, music brought me to so many things and so many people. And I'm so thankful. And I still talk like you do. I still speak to a lot of the fans, man. A lot of the fans. I'm just so it's the coolest thankful. thing about social media is, you know, even though you stop working with some organizations and start working with other ones like these relationships last, even though like maybe everybody that was coming to see me with Stuck Mojo or with Fozzie, right. like they're still going to Fozzie and Stuck Mojo shows, mm -hmm. you know, that's great. But they still talk to me online. They still check out, you know, the other things that I'm doing, which is fantastic. It's cool to see, you know, in another way, like people growing up too. Like yes. there's some people that would come and, and see us at a show and like they were just in school. They were just at university. And now like, now you know? they're all like careers, it's family. Crazy children i mean natalie like, works for nasa she doing all right i like to i'd like to think NASA, we had a small piece of that because we did influence, i'd like to think we have a small part in that you know because hey, we were man. very highly influential individuals in her life they they and they still show love and, and mel I, I keep up mel and i you know she'll put something out there wrestling stuff or whatever and you know it's melanie price and i'm always like who's gonna pay the price I remember this big girl jumped on top of her right while she was wrestling, right? I was like, Mel, I'm on my way. You know, <laughs> so, and she just laughed. And it's just beautiful. And and Pierre, uh, Pierre's gonna be on um, yeah. in another week or so. We'll have awesome. Pierre on. Um, Keith Netto that used to manage me, man manage Bones also. I'm waiting for Bones to get back in touch with me. I've asked Rich, but you know how Rich is. He hadn't really responded or whatever. I just put it out there to him though. He, you know, he's he's always doing his thing. The thing with Rich, like you know, when he's writing. Yeah, yeah. Even if you in the band, he's he's right. writing. He'll, he'll come up for air when he comes up for air. You know, you know how much stuff that I learned. I just remember listening to you guys and how you got, and then all the stuff that you guys said, it happened. And so a lot of people were like, um, are you mad? Are we? I was like, mad at what? I said, I'm not mad. I said, I was disappointed because what we did after that great revival, even though it wasn't, um, um, even though it, it wasn't about, it, even though we weren't, um, it didn't hit people like, it was a great album to me. You know, it was a great album. I enjoyed every single bit of what we did. And, um, you know, whether people liked it or not, it, does, it doesn't matter. I, I, I was looking at things and my wife, she was texting me, so I apologize. Okay. And so um, I, lost my, I lost my train of thought. But we, um, all I know is that we had a great time. I think that what we did was special. So many people have told us, and and I'm telling you, there's been a lot of people that said like, hey, that's the best lineup. That was Stuck Mojo's best lineup. And I'm like, wow. So when they say that, like they'll say that on social media, I'm kind of like, it's like, you know, like, well, thank you very much. You know, I'm just trying to be easy because I don't want to offend anybody. Now, yeah. I'm confident in who I am. I know that what we did was a beautiful thing. And how yeah. we did, and, and the reaction that we got from people. Open season was crazy, you know that, and it could have been more. You know, it was just, you know, hey, it, 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 it's got a big place in my heart. You know, it, it's some of my my favorite times. Yeah, you know, with some of my favorite people that you know. I mean, you, you and Rich and and Sean. I mean, you're gonna be family forever. Yes, you know, indeed, one hundred percent. It was a working arrangement, and yeah. you know. It had its season and it was an amazing season that yes, like, it was. I will always tell people about it. I will always think fondly of it. You know, yes, I've done sir. some pretty cool things since then too that yeah. I would not have had the opportunity to do if it, it weren't not other those things. experiences. Yeah. So, you know, life is just amazing. You gotta be in it for the whole journey of the whole thing. Like I just have so much love and wonder for for everything, you know, everything that happened in all the ways that it happened, you know, just, I have a good feeling about all of it, you know, yes. the, the things that maybe didn't go the way that we wanted them to, mm -hmm. you know, that's life as well. Like it, it's, right. it's amazing for the things that go 
so well, you're like, well, I wasn't really prepared for that. Now I guess we're doing all this stuff. Right. You indeed. know, you know, there's, there is a thing that, that it's a little unrealistic when that stuff happens, you know, mm -hmm. and it could happen in just everyday stuff. Like all of a sudden, you know, man, I haven't had to put air in the tires of my car in a while. You right. know, like you, you, you start knocking on wood, you're like, things are going a little too good. You know, like <laughs> things are just rolling right along. Like I, I found a 20, you know, in the parking lot at the gas station, you know, so I'm going to pay it forward right now, right now. Yeah, that, yeah, you know, yeah. who, whoever that guy is, he's paying for gas on pump four, put 20 on yeah. that. Just, yeah. just, I, that's my dude. Right. Give him the 20. I don't know right. whose it is, I, but that's my dudes. You know, you just, you tried it with all the, the beautiful experiences to pay those forward and learn the lessons from the things that didn't go. Indeed, life lessons, man, most yeah. definitely. And yeah. I and I know that, Jay, I just know that he's gonna continue to do things, man, because he's just really into it now, you know, he stopped playing ball and now he's just really focused on it. And um, I just wanna, man, just make sure all my revenue streams and all that stuff, you know, I started my LLC. I'm just, at this next album, I think we're gonna put it out ourselves nice. um, and uh, just, just handle business, man. Just and I mean, that do. that could be another whole conversation of like, you know, I, I mentioned it when I mentioned my website, you know, the music industry mm -hmm. is changing. Yes. Uh, the pandemic really, for as inconvenient as it has obviously been for the entire globe, um, the entertainment industry has been just decimated. Right. Um, and it was already, it was on a pretty downward slide anyway, like, even just doing local work, um, you know, running a blues jam. Like I've always held a jam here in Atlanta right. forever and ever. Like small clubs like that just folding up. They can't, right. yeah, just indeed. not doing the business because more people are online. You know, online. And, and younger kids, you know, it's not their culture because they're more online. They're more interested in videos. They're more interested right. in mm -hmm. editing video and, and that side of stuff or video games or whatever. Like it's just a whole other thing. And, you know, you certainly can't be like, man, I really wish these young kids would come out to the clubs again, you know, sound like that old fuddy duddy. Right. But it, it is a turning of generations of the Indeed. sort that like kids are just into a different kind of thing, but we're still super passionate about this, this music business and life and expression. Like, don't ever lose that. Like, that's, that's the thing that makes any of it worth it. Cause like, you're going to suffer. You're going to struggle. You're going to go broke. You're going to earn your money back and go broke again. Mm -hmm. You know, like all of those things are absolutely going to happen. You better have a lot of love in your heart for the work. For what you're you doing. Know? Yeah, indeed. Indeed. That's, That's, I, I've said it. I've said it. I've told my wife so many times, like, you just don't know. I just love this so much. I said, I, I just love music. And it's just what it is. It's what I'll always be, you know, whether I make a billion dollars or where I make two cents. It's just it's just what it is. And I'm going to love it. And I'm going to continue to write and do what I do. It just makes interesting questions for, you know, in the age of where everybody's comfortable with streaming, we're all paying for streaming mm -hmm. services, but it's an interesting metric that if you're paying $10 a month for a streaming service, you get to listen to everything that's recorded right now. Right. And then next month, it's all of that stuff plus anything else that's come out right now. What, Prim, how many did, did, did they say how many uh, different songs come out every week, every day? I forget, but I mean, it's ridiculous. It's, it's, it's crazy. And, because and all then, of you know, being an artists, independent person, you're uh, you're fighting with all the people who are the stars and who are, but but then again, last thing, then again, because I, I need to holler at my wife. So the last yeah. thing is that um, with Ant, one of our boys, he's got his thing. He started his record label, stuff like that. And he's gone out there and he's like you, he really gets out there and studies stuff. And he was just like, so many of the streaming things and stuff like that. He's like, record companies are behind so many things that we don't even know about. He's like, they're not going anywhere. They're not going anywhere. They have found out how to circumvent the, the, you know, what's going on. And so he's just like, nah, they're right there, man. They're yeah. right there. So yeah, man, it's all a beautiful thing though, man. But anyway, it's once cool. again, thank you so much, man. Love you, bro. Love you. This was a great time. It really was. It really was. And so however, however he decides he's going, cause he's, he's the guy, however he's going to chop and do whatever, whatever. But I'm like, man, let it run. My apologies for being so long winded. No, 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 we're good. We, we had to get, I wanted you to talk and have the information. That's why I, I wanted you on. I knew you were going to be a good guest. I knew you, your knowledge, you got a lot of knowledge of what's going on. And I appreciate that. So I, you know, we've talked about it, you know, when he has certain individuals that he brings on, I'm going to be just like right here. 
paying attention because because I want to listen to what the youngsters got to say. You know, yes, sir. I want to hear them so I can laugh at them and clown. You know. <laughs> But we'll do this again. There's so many things to talk about. Let's yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. We will definitely do it, man. Once again, thank you so much. We yeah. love you, bro. Yeah, exactly. You good. Hey, make sure you love tell you him, hug, listen, hug him for me, man. Make tell you him I love it. him, man. Most definitely. Absolutely. And, and All right. the same back to the rest yes, of the family. Yes, indeed. I will, man. All right. All right. Be good, Mike.